The story begins with the fact that in a forest near the mountains, a girl screamed that she would bite the scoundrel, and the guy begged for mercy. Chao Yuan is an ordinary student who accidentally entered the game world and is now running away from a girl. About an hour ago, the guy was suddenly transported into the game world in the form of a blade of grass. He was running away from a crowd of men who wanted to catch the grass of the immortal soul, and Chao Yuan did not understand what was happening. He hid under a bush and hoped that he would not be found in this place if he sat quietly. After a while, the guy began to get out of his hiding place and thought that he needed to figure out how to get out. Chao Yuan was trying to figure out how he could even cross paths with people when he looked like grass. He stood in the bushes and nearby he saw a man who was entering a pond. The guy became interested in the silhouette and saw that the girl had long fluffy ears on her head. The girl lifted the hem of her dress and ran in the water, enjoying the splashes. Chao Yuan panicked when he realized that the girl was not a person, but a she-wolf, and I couldn't understand how she ended up here. The girl felt someone else's presence, she turned and asked who was there and where he was hiding. The girl concentrated and began to think about who could overcome her barrier and get to her. She noticed Chao Yuan and noticed that he smelled good and glowed, the guy didn't know what to do. The girl continued to approach, but slipped on a small puddle of water on the grass. She began to fall and realized that it was too slippery and she would not be able to maintain her balance. The girl began to scream and Chao Yuan jumped out of his hiding place and saw that the stranger was falling. The girl fell straight onto Chao Yuan and accidentally kissed him, the guy did not expect that someone else's fall would turn out this way. The couple was surrounded by a bright green light that came from the blade of grass that was Chao Yuan. When their lips parted, the light began to dissipate, and instead of a blade of grass, a guy appeared in front of the girl. Chao Yuan looked at his hand in surprise and asked if he had become human again. The girl covered her mouth with her hand when she saw the guy in front of her and tried to realize that she had just kissed him. Chao Yuan smiled contentedly as he examined the girl, he noticed that she was beautiful up close. Tears appeared in the girl's eyes, she screamed loudly and began to move away from the guy. The girl screamed that the guy was worried and asked him not to come closer, Yuan asked the girl not to scream. He knew they would be in trouble if those people heard them, the guy extended his hand, but the girl bit him. Chao Yuan began shouting that he was in pain and for the girl to get off his hand. The people who were chasing the immortal soul grass heard the screams and headed towards the sound. Men were shouting nearby, and Chao Yuan realized that they had been heard and would soon be found. The guy decided that he needed to run away from this place as soon as possible. But he had to complete his escape when the she-wolf began to rise in front of him, Chao Yuan was scared. The girl was very angry, she stretched her hands towards the guy and asked where he was going. Chao Yuan ran away as fast as he could but was caught up from both sides, the girl screamed for him to stop. The she-wolf screamed that she would still get the pervert, so there was no point in him running away. Chao Yuan continued to run and shouted that he was not a pervert and had no idea where he was. The guy realized that he was in big trouble when he saw a cliff in front of him. Chao Yuan began to break sharply, he was very worried that he would not be able to stop in time. The guy's foot stopped at the very edge and he realized that a little more and he would definitely have fallen down. Due to Chao Yuan's sudden breaking, several stones flew down, disappearing into a slight mist. The guy seriously wondered if he could really die in this game universe if he jumped off a cliff. He spoke his thoughts out loud, and when the she-wolf appeared behind him, she asked why don't he check. Chao Yuan was very frightened and turned back sharply, a terribly angry girl stood next to him. The guy fell to his knees in front of her and began to bow, he promised that he would not run away again and asked for mercy. The wolf screamed that she was going to teach him a lesson, and then more hesitantly said that she didn't kiss him on purpose. The girl blushed and thought that this was her first kiss with someone. Chao Yuan approached the girl and asked contentedly what she just said, and the girl got angry. She was embarrassed and started screaming at the grimacing guy, the man stood not far from them and asked to ask them a question. The she-wolf screamed that she had not yet dealt with him and was not ready to answer questions, and Yuan asked to ask the question later. The couple continued to quarrel, the man looked at them and noticed that the girl was the princess of the Silver Wolf Clan. The man said that he had sent his disciples to find a lost treasure and he needed to ask them a few questions. The she-wolf turned to the man and asked why he had not brought an offering since he had come to seek help. 
Chao Yuan immediately noticed changes in the girl's behavior and thought that the she-wolf had a very powerful aura. The man said that he had lost the treasure, but he was told that everything that falls into the she-wolf's territory belongs to her. The man frowned and became gloomy when he realized that it would not be so easy to come to an agreement with the she-wolf. He knew that the guy smelled of immortal grass, and he should know about his whereabouts, and they did not need the help of wolves. The man motioned his people away and said that they would discuss this later since the princess was busy. The she-wolf snorted and said that she would remember the man's scent and would bite him to death if he appeared again. Chao Yuan was about to leave and said that he would wait to meet the silver wolf princess. But the she-wolf ordered him to stop, Chao Yuan was very worried because the girl remained unperturbed. He looked closely at the silver wolf princess and realized that he would have to resort to a trick. Chao Yuan smiled one of his flirtatious smiles and called the girl beautiful. The guy said that he still had things to do and asked to postpone their sweet conversation until later, but this angered the girl. The she-wolf slapped the guy in the face and screamed that he wasn't finished yet and that the guy was generally only good for food. The guy fell to the ground from the blow, and the princess ordered the guy to be taken to their tribe, and her subordinates went to the guy. Chao Yuan screamed, trying to find out why she needed an ordinary mortal, but her subordinates told the guy to behave quietly. The guy did not listen and continued to call the silver wolf princess, so he was shouted at again and ordered to go. Chao Yuan was led into the forest, and he realized that he was in big trouble and could be eaten, the guy was trying to figure out what to do. He was led deeper into the forest, and the guy thought that as soon as he returned to human form, he immediately ended up in a wolf's den. The bowl of water fell to the floor and broke with a loud thud amid loud cursing. The man was very unhappy that they drove the grass into the territory of the wolves, and the man with the information was taken away by the she-wolf. The guys asked the lord not to be nervous, since silver wolves are not strong in herbalism, and the guy is unlikely to tell them anything. The man said that he was afraid that the she-wolf would become stronger if she got the grass and then people would cease to exist. The man said that they have the opportunity to fight for their existence until the she-wolf gets the grass. Chao Yuan jumped down from the tree, he was thinking about how he had turned into a mortal soul grass again. In this form, he found himself on the roof of a building next to a pond and wanted to quickly leave the wolf's den. The princess of the silver wolves appeared in the courtyard, dipping her foot into the water. The girl was wearing only a towel and was about to enjoy water treatments under a sakura tree. She dipped her feet into the water and sat down on the stone edge, the girl could finally relax. She wondered how the guy got through the barrier, she thought the guy was not tasty because he smelled like grass. The princess believed that since the guy was nothing interesting, he would have to be eaten. The she-wolf stopped herself and realized that she was missing something very important, she looked ahead intently. The she-wolf remembered their first meeting and realized that he looked like a blade of grass, and not like a person. Chao Yuan heard the girl talking about him and decided to hide to listen. But from the roof he couldn't hear her well, the guy remembered that he turned into a man after a kiss. He started running across the roof and wondered if it would happen again if they kissed. The she-wolf felt someone else's presence and asked who was there, concentrating a large amount of water in her hand. She turned around and aimed a stream of water at the roof, she screamed for the enemy to fight her. The silver wolf princess's water attack hit Chao Yuan and he flew off the roof. A blade of grass began to fall on the girl, and she got scared and asked what it was. Chao Yuan panicked and shouted that he could not swim, the guy began to cry from fear. A blade of grass flew into the she-wolf and knocked her off her feet, the two of them began to fall into the water. Chao Yuan lay on something very soft and warm and asked if he had really gone to heaven. The she-wolf on whom he was lying said menacingly that it was him after all, the guy said he didn't want to peek. The girl screamed at him to tell him another reason why he was on the roof, Chao Yuan noticed that he had become human again. He thought that this was happening due to contact with the she-wolf, and the girl realized that she would not hear an answer from him. The door opened sharply and a subordinate of the princess appeared in the passage, asking if everything was okay with her. The princess turned to the girl and held the guy under water, she told her subordinate that she was fine. The girl doubted that she should return to her duties and said that she had definitely heard something. But the silver wolf princess told her again that everything was fine, while the guy was trying to surface. Chao Yuan had spent too much time underwater and was running out of air. The princess got angry and asked if her subordinate could hear her well when she was told to leave. 
The subordinate was forced to retreat, so she bowed and left. When the subordinate left, the she-wolf turned her gaze to the guy, whom she was still holding underwater. The girl let go of Chao Yuan's head and told him that he could get out of the water. But the guy did not surface, and the girl screamed at him not to say that he had drowned. The she-wolf leaned over the guy and screamed at him to stop pretending to be dead. The girl slapped the guy and screamed at him to wake up because this trick didn't work on her. But despite all this, Chao Yuan remained unconscious and showed no signs of life. The she-wolf put the guy on the ground and sat down next to him, she realized that he was not pretending. The girl decided that she would not let Chao Yuan die and leaned towards him to perform artificial respiration. But she didn't have time to touch someone else's lips, because a fountain of water poured out on her. Chao Yuan sat up and began to cough vigorously and continued to cough up the remaining water. The guy got up from the ground and asked himself if he was dead, while the she-wolf looked at him in shock. He happily looked at his hands and was very glad that he was alive. The she-wolf came up from behind the guy and began to choke him, she asked why not kill him now. One of the subordinates appeared next to them and told the princess that the patriarch requested her presence. The girl turned to her subordinate and shouted to him that he had arrived on time. The she-wolf took the guy by the collar and dragged him along, she said the old man might know who this guy is. The representative of the wild dogs approached the elder, he wanted to discuss the issue of marriage between Lin Yuan and his clan. The jackal started shouting that the elder had promised to marry his daughter to one of their clan and asked if the man would break his word. The man with the fan said that marriage is a priority for the wild fox clan. The elder sat in front of representatives of different clans and did not know what to do now. He remembered drinking with all three clansmen and realized that he could have promised them all his daughter. And since they were all here now, the man knew that he had actually done it. The door to the hall opened and the princess of silver wolves and Chao Yuan appeared on the threshold. All participants in the conversation turned towards the sound and saw the girl over whom the argument was taking place. The silver wolf princess became gloomy when she heard what the men were talking about and asked what kind of marriage. The elder was very nervous and said that Xiao Ming Ming was very timely and asked to listen to him. The girl quickly began to approach the elder, not paying attention to the others. Xiao Ming Ming grabbed the man's beard and shouted at the old man to explain everything clearly. The man told his daughter that the promises made by the silver wolves were irrevocable because of the clan's reputation. The she-wolf thought that she did not want to marry these swindlers and tried to come up with a way. She looked at Chao Yuan standing nearby and figured out how she could get out of this situation. Xiao Ming said that there are rarely young masters in their area, but her heart is already occupied with something else. She said that yesterday she was attacked by a huge dragon and a young man saved her and now their clan is obliged to repay him. The clan representatives were shocked and asked who this man was and where the huge dragon came from. The silver wolf princess pointed at Chao Yuan and said that she came here to introduce him to her father. The guy didn't understand what was happening and asked the girl what she was trying to do. The she-wolf told him to shut up and cooperate, otherwise he should not blame him for taking his life. The elder became serious and asked Chao Yuan if everything his daughter said was true. Xiao Ming Ming held the guy's hand tightly, and he nervously agreed with everything she said. A member of the wild fox clan became indignant and shouted that man was not capable of defeating the dragon and it was a lie. The elder said that these two rules cannot be broken, but he has a great idea. Representatives of other clans towered over the couple when the elder said that they would hold a competition. Chao Yuan panicked when he realized that he would have to participate in a competition for marriage. The jackal listened to the elder's proposal on how to get out of this situation and shouted that he agreed. The elder stroked his beard and said that he didn't think anyone had any objections to the premarital competition. Another man appeared at the door, shouting that he did not agree with the holding of the competition. Chao Yuan had to cover his eyes as a strong glow was emanating from the man. The man walked into the hall, and Chao Yuan's luck system started because they encountered the main hero of the region. The main character passed by Chao Yuan, the guy watched him and tried to figure out who this man was. The fox's representative said that although the guy looks scary, he is a fire wolf trash. The region's main character lit a fire in his palm and said that he was not the useless fire wolf he was three years ago. And if the representative of the wild foxes thinks that he has not changed, then he is mistaken and has put his hand forward. The fire wolf released a beam of fire from his palm and aimed it at the man from the wild force clan. 
Everything happened very quickly, and the beam of fire hit the fox directly in the chest, after which it was thrown back. The guy from the wild fox clan screamed when a huge ball of fire hit him. The fox sank to the floor unconscious and the jackal thought that that guy had reached the fifth level of the honorable monster realm. The guy stopped in front of the elder, bowed and called him uncle, the man greeted the fiery wolf. The elder asked for what purpose he came, and he himself thought that since he immediately attacked the fox, it means he was not up to anything good. Fire Wolf recalled that three years ago, uncle broke the marriage agreement, and his meridians were broken. The system said that the fire ox was generated according to the template and the task of capturing luck was initiated. The system asked Chao Yuan to look at it, and the guy became interested in what the task of capturing luck was. A chain of quests to seize luck appeared in front of him, and the guy confirmed that he accepted it. The system wrote that he needed to prevent the marriage between the wolf and Yin Yao, and if he failed, he would die. The guy was very surprised and panicked a little, he thought that the system had very barbaric methods. The fire wolf said that Yin Yao still loved him and could not understand how this could be overlooked. The guy raised his fist and said that thanks to his love for Yin Yao, he became a noble beast. He looked to the side and shouted that he had come here for only one purpose. Then he pointed at the silver wolf princess and shouted that he had come to take Yao Yao away. The she-wolf frowned and told the guy not to call her that, since she was not close to him. The fiery wolf came up and began to reach out to the girl and said that he understood that she was saying that because of her father and offered to leave. Chao Yuan stopped the wolf's hand and told the guy to stop because the girl didn't want to go with him. The fire wolf got angry and shouted how dare the guy touch him and raised his hand to strike. Chao Yuan, in a panic, asked why he rushes at everyone when he wants and dodged the blow. The system asked whether to use the skill provided for the quest, and the guy gave permission. After this, the room was filled with a very bright white light, and it was impossible to see what was happening. When the light went out, Chao Yuan's hands were on the fire wolf's chest, pushing it back. The fog around the couple cleared and an awkward silence fell, the system said that it was the dragon's claws capturing fortune. The fire wolf said that the guy's movements were very fast, and he couldn't even notice them. Chao Yuan smiled at his opponent and said that now he knows that he is quite experienced. The fire wolf hit Chao Yuan on the cheek with the back of his hand and he screamed. The blow was so strong that the guy screamed as he was thrown back a long distance. And the fire wolf himself said that, despite all his experience, the guy lacks strength. Chao Yuan fell to the floor with a whistle and slid along the wooden planks for some time. He tensed up, sat down on the floor, and thought that the person in front of him was truly ruthless. The fire wolf came closer to him and said that he could not believe that such a small insect dared to contradict him. The elder stopped Lang Yang and said, if he really has powerful powers, let them compete for Yin Yao's hand in the tournament. The fire wolf turned around and said that if I really wanted this, then he would fight for her. But Chao Yuan shouted that Lan Yen had no right to retreat since they had not finished fighting yet. The fire wolf looked at the guy with disbelief and said that he was surprised that he stood up after his blow. Chao Yuan rubbed his bruised cheek and told his opponent that he should not belittle the top player's abilities. Lan Yen shouted that in this case the guy should take another blow from the greedy wolf's claws and rush into the attack. However, this time Chao Yuan was ready to fight and easily dodged. The princess of silver wolves carefully watched the fight and noticed with interest that the guy dodged the attack. The fire wolf continued to throw punches and kicks, but the guy dodged each time. Lan Yen is very angry because he couldn't hit the enemy and tried to hit the guy with his fist. The wolf frowned and tried to figure out how Chao Yuan could evade the attacks of a fifth-class demon. Chao Yuan recorded all the greedy wolf claws attack skill data into the system when he received the blow. At that moment, the system told him that since he was attacked by the greedy wolf's claws and did not die, the data would be recorded in the system. And she began the next task, in which he had to defeat Lan Yang and complete the quest Lang Yang's nonsense. The fire wolf was already furious and shouted at the guy couldn't even challenge him and was constantly dodging. Chao Yuan then attacked him using his greedy wolf claw technique. The attack hit the wolf right in the stomach, and it opened its eyes in disbelief as it flew away from the guy. The jackal and wild dog who were watching the battle could not believe that Chao Yuan was able to carry out such an attack. Chao Yuan stood confidently on her feet opposite the fire wolf, and said that the guy was just pathetic and weak. 
Lan Yen sat on the floor and shouted that this was impossible, he asked ere the guy learned greedy wolf claws. Chao Yuan said that the guy has no right to know, and he himself thought happily that he was the main character here. The system said that the task was half completed and he had one more thing to do to avoid death. Chao Yuan was unhappy with these conditions and tried to find out from the system why he had not finished yet. The next moment, the guy turned into a mortal soul grass again, and looked at his hands in horror. The guy panicked and asked the system why he became grass at the most crucial moment. However, the system said that the countdown was 30 seconds, and he must complete the mission during this time, otherwise he would die. Chao Yuan was desperate and didn't know how he could handle the rest of the task when he was a grass. While Chao Yuan panicked in his grass form, the jackals and the wild dog tried to figure out whether he belonged to the species of grass fairies. The princess of silver wolves observed the situation and realized that this would be the last straw. Chao Yuan caught the girl's gaze and told Yin Yao to quickly come up with a solution. The she-wolf pretended that she didn't understand what he was talking about and the guy screamed and that he had very little time. He looked in panic at the system notification, which showed that he had only seconds left. The jackal and the wild dog were talking to each other when they noticed that the blade of grass had disappeared. Chao Yuan was desperate and decided that he had to take the risk no matter what, so he ran to the she-wolf. He jumped on the girl in the hope that when he touched Yin Yao's body, he would turn into a human again. A blade of grass hit the girl in the chest, forcing the princess of silver wolves to retreat towards the wall. Chao Yuan, in the form of a blade of grass, landed on the girl and placed his face between her breasts. Yin Yao blushed and screamed at Chao Yuan, she asked where he was sticking. The touch worked, and the blade of grass began to glow brightly in white and green again. Chao Yuan became a guy again and now rode over Yin Yao, he said that the girl was different from other ladies. After which he pressed her to his chest and said that today she is his woman and the others will die if they try to take her. The system said that the task was completed, and the guy exhaled with relief and released the surprised girl. However, the fox representative shouted to be detained because the discussion of the martial arts competition was not over yet. Chao Yuan was not impressed by the fox's words and asked how he dared to stand up with his chatter. The wild dog shouted that the guy had only defeated the giant dragon and the fifth-level noble master. The fox representative said that the competition for the bride should have rules, and this grass fairy would ruin everything. The fox continued to say that killing the giant dragon solves nothing as the she-wolf approached him. The princess covered someone else's mouth with her hand and said if he wanted to say that she was lying. Yin Yao looked at the guy with a frightening expression and asked if he realized what the consequences would be. But the elder, who observed the whole situation, decided that the fox was indeed right. The silver wolf princess took a break from beating the fox and asked what her father meant. The elder approached Chao Yuan and said that if he wanted to become part of their tribe, he must bring the corpse of a dragon. Chao Yuan pointed at himself and shouted, is he really being told to bring a giant dragon? The elder said that it should be very simple for his son-in-law, and he should immediately take the dragon's body with him. Chao Yuan began to leave and said that he did not have time to waste on this and risk his life. And when the she-wolf asked where he was going, he turned around and said that he was going wherever he wanted, and she couldn't force him. At that moment, the system said that the third quest had begun in which he needed to earn recognition from the Silver Wolf tribe. The system wanted him to become the elder's son-in-law in the future, otherwise he would die. The system gave him 3000 seconds to complete this task and immediately began counting down. The guy ran to the elder, fell on his knees in front of him and began to bow. He said that the man was very wise and knowledgeable, so he asked him to help find the giant dragon. The elder stroked his beard and said that this young man really wanted to marry his daughter. The man was saying that they would be very happy together when the silver wolf princess appeared in front of him. And Chao Yuan now looked at the silver wolf princess and realized that she was evil. A representative of the foxes said that in the northern lands, where it snows all year round, there lives a giant ice dragon. His face was frowning, and the fox said that if he wanted to find the dragon, he should go there. Chao Yuan turned to the fox representative and asked how far the mountain was to the north of here. The fox said that it wasn't far, pushed him to the side and said that he had to go there to get to the north. Chao Yuan turned back dissatisfied and hoped that this weakling could not deceive him. He stopped in front of the building and began to think which side the north was on. 
List was pleased with himself because it would take the guy a year and eight months to get there. The fire wolf bowed to the elder and said that they did not have to worry about the guy and could start the competition now. Chao Yuan, in a direction unknown to him, hoped that the north was in that direction. He heard a strange sound, as if something was falling on him from above, and raised his head. Something similar to an egg was actually flying towards him, and he managed to dodge and the blow hit the ground. The guy picked up the egg from the ground and began to examine it from all sides. He wondered why an egg fell from the sky so suddenly, and he peered into the darkness. Yao shouted that they must wait for Chao Yuan to return and all the other representatives were using an insidious method. The fire wolf knelt down in front of the girl and asked if she really believed that the grass fairy could bring her happiness. Lan Yen saying that he is willing to risk his life to protect her is the best choice. But before the girl could say anything, the attention of everyone present was distracted by a loud roar. The elder frowned as he felt a strong pressure and realized that it resembled the aura of a dragon. The man headed towards the exit of the building, and the silver wolf princess ran after him. When they went outside, against the backdrop of the starry sky they saw a huge ice dragon towering above them. The elder and his daughter carefully examined the monster in front of them, which should not have been here. The elder became gloomy because he knew that the Silver Wolf tribe would not be able to cope with him and would simply be wiped off the face of the earth. Inyao called everyone who claimed her, but they ran screaming away from the dragon. The ice dragon watched them disdainfully and said that he had not yet had time to say anything, but they were running away. After this, the beast used its ice dragon breath and stopped the fugitives, freezing them. The elder watched the dragon and tried to understand how it appeared here and was afraid that it would be the end of his tribe. But at this point the ice dragon's attack stopped, as unknown forces used the greedy wolf claw's attack. The elder turned around in surprise and tried to figure out who was able to attack the giant ice dragon. This man turned out to be Chao Yuan, who called his future father-in-law and said that he had already returned to save them. The giant ice dragon roared and asked how dare a small man attack a dragon. The giant ice dragon roared again and shouted that they were now using ice dragon breath and aimed it at the guy. Chao Yuan jumped up and shouted to forget about his icy breath forever. The giant ice dragon stood on the ground and watched its opponent's movements in shock. The guy was surrounded by golden light, and he headed down when he gained the required height and hit the dragon from above. He pushed off from its muzzle and did a backflip, Chao Yuan shouted at the dragon and called him to follow him. The guy landed firmly on his feet with a slight thud after his successful attack. A giant ice dragon rose into the sky and shouted for the man to wait for his death, but the guy was not afraid. Chao Yuan with the fox and said that he really didn't have to go far, so he would defrost them soon. Inya walked up to the guy and took his wrist to take him away from the other guys. The girl led him along, Chao Yuan didn't expect this, but he followed her obediently. Away from everyone, the Silver Wolf Princess called him a swindler and told him to explain everything immediately. She pointed her finger at him so that he could explain how he could defeat the dragon. Chao Yuan laughed awkwardly and began to rub his neck, after which he began to remember how it all happened. A giant ice dragon flew in a panic over the forest in search of its baby. At that moment, the guy was just examining the egg so that it would not crack anywhere, and did not realize that there was a dragon nearby. The giant ice dragon noticed this and landed next to the guy, shouting joyfully that he had found his baby. The dragon asked the man how he found his baby, and the guy guessed that the dragon was talking about the egg. Chao Yuan looked at the egg in his hands and told the dragon that he thought it was cracked in some places. The guy's hands began to glow green, and the broken shell began to close before his eyes. The guy was shocked when he realized that he had an ability that allowed him to heal. The giant ice dragon took the egg from the guy's hands and sincerely thanked the man for saving his baby. He leaned closer to Chao Yuan and said that he smelled grassy on him. The ice dragon said that their species does not forget about its duty and the guy can ask for whatever he wants. Chao Yuan was delighted and began to ask if the dragon was ready to do anything. Then he pointed to the ice dragon and asked for his help in putting on the show. The giant ice dragon was a little surprised by this request and clarified that he needed to act according to the plan. Inyao grabbed the guy by the collar and told him to stop laughing and quickly tell him what happened. The elder asked to pay attention to him and said that Chao Yuan was able to defeat the dragon and could take part in the competition. However, the rest of the participants hurried to run away and shouted that they would never compete with him. The fire wolf stopped, 
pointed at the girl and said that he still had something to say. Lan Yang said that he and Yin Yang promised to get married, but the princess said that it was child's play. The fire wolf took the girl by the wrist and said that he lost her once, but now he will not let her disappear again. The guy was wondering whether he should interfere in their conversation since the quest was over, but the system gave him a new task. He had to win the competition for Yin Yao's hand, otherwise he would die, and this time the guy was no longer surprised. Chao Yuan said that the wolf should come to him to solve everything now, and Lang Yang said that the guy would be defeated. The elder was very excited and shouted that in this case he was announcing the first round of the competition for the hand of his daughter. After that, he shouted for them to attack each other without further ado and the guys began to fight. Chao Yuan concentrated the golden light in his hand to use the greedy wolf claw technique. And his opponent Lan Yen did the same to attack the enemy with his most powerful greedy wolf claw technique. Their palms met, and the light sparkled from the meeting of their techniques, and created a strong explosion. The guy jumped back, and the system said that the analysis of abilities was completed and they were immune to damage. The fire wolf was also thrown back and slid along the floor, Lan Yen was irritated and angry. But then he noticed that the guy was not hurt at all and could not believe his eyes. He lost his temper and asked the guy how about this and used the greedy wolf's multiple claw attack on him. Chao Yuan put his hands in front of him, and the system said that it had completed the analysis of the school attack. The guy received several scratches, but the system activated the skill of reducing damage and accelerating regeneration. Chao Yuan used the greedy wolf's multiple claw counter attack on his opponent. The guy apologized and said that he didn't want to hurt him, but in the battle one of them had to fall. The fire wolf stood in torn clothes at a great distance from the guy and was seriously wounded. Blood flowed from his mouth, but he could not accept the fact that he was losing to Chao Yuan. Lan Yen began to scream, his clothes were torn, his eyes turned completely red and rings of fire appeared around him. The elder was shocked when he realized that the fire wolf had leveled up right in the middle of the battle. Lan Yen shouted that it was unforgivable that there would be fire in the middle of him, and his hair flew in all directions. His eyes also resembled burning fire, and he said that the only one who would go would be Chao Yuan. The system asked the guy to promote his kingdom, but Chao Yuan didn't know what she was talking about. The fire wolf began to move much faster and soon found itself right in front of the guy's face. He said that the outcome was already lost and grabbed Chao Yuan by the neck, the guy couldn't understand how he became so fast. The fire wolf raised his opponent and said that if he accepted defeat now, he would spare him. The guy tried to unhook someone else's hand from himself and realized that he could not use the claws of a greedy wolf or any other counterattack. He urgently needed to come up with a new way, and he exhaled into someone else's hand. The fire wolf frowned and looked at the actions of his opponent with incomprehension. The next moment, the guy was able to get out of someone else's grip, and Lan Yan's hand was frozen. The system said that the ice breath analysis was 50% successful and the guy started coughing. Chao Yuan smiled contentedly and thought that 50% was enough to win. Lan Yang looked at his frozen hand and said that the Yuan were using ice breath to restrict his movement. After that, he surrounded his opponent with a ring of fire and shouted that he was already at the sixth stage anyway. The fire wolf was sure that since he owned divine fire, no one could cope with him. He shouted for the insignificant speck to die and used the blazing flame wolves technique. And three fiery wolves of different colors flew towards the guy, ready to deal with him right away. Chao Yuan looked at the huge fire animals that were approaching him with terrifying speed. And the very next moment he was standing in the middle of a huge flame when the fiery wolves crashed straight into him. Yin Yao was very scared and called Chao Yuan, she began to walk towards the fire. But the elder told her not to go because fighting for sake is fighting to the death, the girl screamed that Yuan would burn. At this time, the guy was standing in the middle of the fire, he was very hot and had to wait until the system finished the analysis. The fire wolf continued to fly in the air, controlling the flames and telling the guy to just accept defeat. Chao Yuan continued to shield his eyes from the fire and could not believe that the main character actually said such a thing. Lan Yen was surprised and tried to understand what the guy said, but at that moment icy streams began to surround him. Chao Yuan used the ice breath technique and extinguished all the fire around him. The cold air blew all around and the she-wolf was surprised that the boy used a less gigantic dragon. 
Silver Wolf Princess, I think he only needs to look once to use the technique. The Fire Wolf put his hand in front of him and shouted for the guy to eat it if he wanted to end up in a coffin like that. Shior with an icy breath was completed and the guy headed towards the enemy shouting that only weaklings blame fate. The Fire Wolf saw his opponent use the air pressure to fly up and shouted for him to rest in peace. Chao Yuan ordered the Fire Wolf to watch his tongue and quickly approached him, after which Chao Yuan hit him in the chin, and the Fire Wolf lost consciousness. The guy remained in the air, and Lan Yen quickly fell down, remaining unconscious. Chao Yuan landed neatly on his feet while his opponent fell with a loud thud. When the dust from the broken ground cleared, it could be seen that the Fire Wolf had been defeated. Chao Yuan approached the enemy and said that he had shown him how a real protagonist should act. The Elder approached the Fire Wolf and told him that he had lost the first round. Then the man turned to his daughter and asked if they agreed that from that day on Chao Yuan was Yin Yao's husband. At first the She-Wolf didn't understand what he was talking about, but then she said that there was no problem with that. The Elder said that during the next meeting of the Beast People he would ask Yuan to represent him, Lan Yen shouted his objection. Chao Yuan shouted that it was not his decision and asked if he wanted to be beaten again. The Fire Wolf said that if he lost once, it does not mean that he will lose again. Lan Yang suggested making a bet and Chao Yuan could not believe that someone wanted to demand revenge from the main character. The system announced a new task, and Chao Yuan suspected what its purpose would be. Therefore, Chao Yuan smiled widely and told the Fire Wolf that he would definitely make a bet with him. Lan Yang was happy and said that if Yuan loses the fight, he will leave Yin Yao forever. The guy asked what the Fire Wolf would do if he lost their bet. Lan Yen said that if he lost the bet, he would grant any wish, and he left to prepare for the meeting of the Beast People. Chao Yuan approached the She Wolf and asked what kind of meeting it was, Yin Yao revealed that he would be the clan leader's companion at the general meeting. The elder put his hands on the couple's shoulders and said that the event was not that important and they should go to the bridal room. The elder took them into the room and pushed them, despite their displeased cries. The couple fell to the floor, and the man told them not to talk too much and to quickly return to each other. Yin Yao was angry with her father, and the guy thought that the bridal room was too ruined. At this moment, Chao Yuan began to think about whether he should go to the girl, since his father-in-law himself ordered it. He began to chuckle and look at Yin Yao, the girl noticed his gaze and became angry. She came up to him and started screaming that he should not even think about such things, since she was the one who was using him. Yin Yao was furious and said that in front of others he is her husband, but in the bedroom he is her slave. Chao Yuan did not argue with her and asked her to let him go because something bad was coming. The guy lay down on the floor, and the she-wolf told him to pack his things because they were going to an event in two days. Chao Yuan was carrying a huge backpack and displeasedly asked if they could take a rest. Yin Yao turned around and asked if he really wanted to rest already, because she could walk calmly. The girl was glad that she could participate in the event, while the guy was indignant that he was carrying all the luggage. Yin Yao walked through the forest and relaxed stretching, she smiled and said that the weather was beautiful today. From the direction of the trees, many small throwing knives flew towards the silver wolf princess. Chao Yuan noticed the threat and shouted in alarm for the she-wolf to be careful. The princess of silver wolves took a break from stretching and looked at the guy, listening to his words. Yin Yao caught two throwing knives and fought off the rest and asked if the guy really thought it would harm her. Chao Yuan covered the she-wolf's back and was hit by a throwing knife and said that he asked her to be careful. Chao Yuan was paralyzed and realized that there was some kind of poison on the throwing knife. The guy could not move or keep his balance and fell to the floor, Yin Yao ran up to him and started asking if he was okay. The men shouted that this was their chance and jumped from the trees onto the wounded guy and the she-wolf. Yin Yao frowned when she saw some pathetic bandits trying to harm her. The last man was defeated and fell to the ground in front of the silver wolf princess. Yin Yao said that she was a respected woman of the wolf tribe and asked if the people attacked to make fools of themselves. While she was speaking, one of the bandits threw his weapon in the hope of wounding the girl from the back. But the plan failed because Chao Yuan caught him. The girl asked why the weapon did not make a sound. The man explained that silence is the strong point of this weapon and that is why it takes lives. Yin Yao started running towards the bandit and screaming if he was thinking of hurting her, not paying attention to his requests to wait. The man shouted that Yuan had fallen under the awl, which was taking his life, 
and he would die in half an hour. The man licked his blade and said that he would help him if the she-wolf tied herself up. Yao doubted and turned to the guy to ask how he was feeling. Chao Yuan examined himself and said that he was completely fine and the girl could beat the man as much as she wanted. The bandit could not believe it and shouted that it was impossible and there was no cure for this all. Yao stopped, stretched her neck and said that in that case she was calm. After that, the girl attacked the robber and began beating him mercilessly. The silver wolf princess sensed a threat from behind and quickly turned her gaze back. The girl jumped to the side and the weapon flew past her, she turned to face her attacker. The she-wolf frowned and concentrated and angrily asked who the attacker was. An alien voice asked where was the one who said that his skills were not able to hurt the girl. The unknown person remained in the shadows and said that the princess of the silver wolves spoke two arrogant words. Yao began to run away from the open area as many attacks were launched around her. The she-wolf looked back and realized that she could not continue to simply run away from the attacks. Chao Yuan grabbed the girl by the forearm and dragged her from the battlefield to his shelter. They hid behind a tree, and the guy asked them to take their time and find out who attacked them first. Yin Yao was annoyed and asked how the guy dared to take advantage of her and why would they look for a weak coward. Chao Yuan said that his pain management technique did not look like weakness, but the upset girl remained silent. The system unlocked a new mission when the voice repeated the girl's words about his weakness and cowardice. The man stood on a sword in the sky and said that it was too high for such weaklings to see. Yin Yao was furious and shouted that she was from the Silver Wolf tribe, and he didn't dare call her weak. The man greeted his nephew and said that he was a role model, as expected from the human world. The Silver Wolf Princess listened attentively and tensed when she heard about the human light. The man on the sword spoke about his path of solitude and that he was invincible, for which he was given such a title. Chao Yuan stepped forward and asked the man if he was the uncle of human light. The man was clearly very proud of this title and when he confirmed this, he closed his eyes and nodded. Chao Yuan took advantage of the moment and began to quickly approach the relaxed man. The guy jumped on his uncle and shouted that if this was true, then things would go much easier. The uncle of human light was thrown onto the grass and captured, he screamed and tried to escape Yuan's grip. Chao Yuan raised his head and told the guy to come down to them and talk to them since his uncle was being held hostage. Even though the man screamed with all his might and asked his nephew to save him, the guy remained indifferent. He asked if his uncle knew that people are called simple humans because of their weakness and asked the she-wolf to confirm. Yin Yao said that this is a fact and people's bodies are too weak, so many live their lives without the physical form of demons. In a matter of seconds, Human Light was next to Yin Yao and asked if people were really weak. The girl did not have time to react in any way and watched in shock as the man pulled his hand towards her. The guy flicked the silver wolf princess on the forehead, and she flew back a few meters. Then she fell to the ground with a loud crash and hit herself hard, the girl continued to slide backwards. Human Light raised his hand and said that the natural physical form of demons was a small matter. Yin Yao sat down on the ground and touched her bruised forehead, then she screamed, how dare the guy. But she had to shut up when the tip of the sword of human light was right in front of her face. The guy said goodbye to the stupid demon and asked him to remember his name Zhou Yu before he died. Chao Yuan saw that the silver wolf princess was in danger, he ran towards her and shouted for the guy to stop. Zhou Yu turned to him and said that he didn't have to worry so much because he would be next. Chao Yuan said that if the girl dies, then the guy's uncle will die right after her. Zhou Yu became gloomy, frowned and asked how dare the guy threaten him. Yuan presented a throwing knife to his uncle's throat and told the guy not to move, otherwise he would kill him. The system said the mission was completed, and she announced the beginning of a new one, in which he needed to use his luck. The guy needed to avoid the attack of human light, but he did not understand why he should care about this. Zhou Yu pointed his sword at his uncle and said that he was disgraced, but he need not worry because, his funeral rites will be carried out properly. These words made Chao Yuan and the uncle of human light scream in horror. The guy immediately began attacking Chao Yuan and his uncle, slicing through the ground as the guy dodged. Zhou Yu continued to attack at a very fast pace, causing his opponents to flee. Chao Yuan grabbed the man by the collar and dragged him along, he shouted that the guy was crazy for wanting to kill his uncle. Zhou Yu did not pay attention to their screams, but he was very angry that the guy was shortening himself well. The guy continued to run away, 
and his uncle shouted that the ties of blood kinship are stronger than all other ties. Zhou Yu said that uncle would die for the human race and should be proud of it. Chao Yuan looked back and shouted that this man didn't care about his own relatives at all. Yuan stopped running and took a step to the side to finally stop running. He used the ice breathing technique to try to stop the human light. An ice tornado headed towards Zhou Yu, but the swordsman easily dodged it. Chao Yuan saw the guy running past him, only to be left behind again. And he threw his uncle after him with a request to take this man back to himself. The man fell in front of his nephew, and the guy held him by the hood, Zhou Yu said that he was a disgusting person. But when he turned towards Chao Yuan, he saw that his place was empty and this greatly surprised him. Chao Yuan took advantage of his opponent's confusion and used a great opportunity to attack from behind. The tip of the throwing knife was aimed at Zhou Yu, and Yuan shouted for him to look at a thousand years of pain. Chao Yuan's surprise attack was successful, and the human light screamed in pain. The human light fell to his knees and began to tremble all over while the guy stood behind him. Chao Yuan looks at his hands and says that he didn't think that the dragon hand was so effective when attacking from behind. The system congratulated him on completing the second part of the mission and told him that he now needed to destroy the human light. Chao Yuan was a little surprised, although he had expected something like this, he didn't think it would happen so early. Zhou Yu took up his sword again and attacked the guy from behind, Yuan believed that the system was trying to make fun of him, and the human light shouted in rage that it wanted to kill the guy and flew to attack him. However, when he landed, he realized the goods were already passing through the void, and the guy was nowhere to be found. Human light began to look around and couldn't figure out if the guy had just disappeared. Chao Yuan turned into a blade of grass at the moment of impact and was able to hide behind a tree, the human light was calling to him. Yuan decided that the man was too crazy and wanted to check if there was information about him in the system. It turned out that he was the main hero of this area and had never lost, and the weakness had not yet been found. Chao Yuan was very upset when he saw that the system was still checking the required data and tried to figure out how to gain time. At that moment, a human light appeared behind him and cut the tree and a piece of its leaf in half. Zhou Yu shouted that he had found the guy, but Yuan was very alarmed that his leaf was cut. Human light decided that the guy had used an illusion and said that he was unlucky to encounter him. Yin Yao then saw that her companion was in big trouble and ran to his aid as quickly as possible. The girl managed to grab a blade of grass and pull it out from under the sword of human light at the last moment. Chao Yuan was happy that Yao Yao came especially to save him. The she-wolf continued to run away with a blade of grass in her hands and asked him not to call himself in such a terrible manner. The human light was furious and said that such lower beings could not survive. He ran after the she-wolf and shouted to her to think about how to cope with this. Chao Yuan told the girl that he had come up with something and asked the silver wolf princess to stop. The girl turned around and couldn't understand why they should stand in such a situation. Then Chao Yuan used the dragon's icy breath in the form of a blade of grass. Human Light was able to fight off the ice tornado with a few blows and said that these were just nasty tricks. But immediately after the icy breath, Chao Yuan used a flaming rage wolf pack attack. Zhou Yu was shocked because he didn't expect the guy to use a few more skills. Therefore, he was unable to repel the fiery attack of his very flock and a strong explosion was heard in the forest. Yin Yao hid behind one of the trees and tightly clutched Chao Yuan's blade of grass to her chest. She took a breath and said that she could not say for sure whether this attack killed Zhou Yu. Chao Yuan, in the form of a blade of grass, was pressed against the wolf's chest and enjoyed his position. But after a while he turned into a human again, and the girl looked at him in surprise. Chao Yuan did not notice the change and continued to enjoy the warmth and softness of the woman's breasts. The princess of silver wolves was very embarrassed when she realized that she herself had pressed the guy to her chest. Well, then she gave him a strong slap in the face and started shouting that he was a pervert and was harassing her again. The princess of silver wolves embarrassedly shouted for the guy not to let go of his hands. Chao Yuan puts it back on the girl and says that she was the first to hug him, but Yin Yao did not want to listen. The guy decided that it didn't matter and asked if the system had deciphered Zhou Yu's weaknesses. The study was completed and it turned out that he had psychological trauma and was afraid of water. Chao Yuan was surprised that the system could find even the darkest past of a person. The guy thought that this was really valuable information, 
all he could do was throw the guy into the river. He wondered where to find her, and Yin Yao believed that he was talking to himself and she had severely damaged his brain. The guy turned to the she-wolf, smiled broadly and said that he would need her help. The girl was a little surprised because she didn't quite understand the guy, but she agreed to help. Chao Yuan stood in front of the human light, who said that he was glad that he finally dared to appear. Chao Yuan pointed at him and said that he would no longer run away, and now they would fight until the death. Zhou Yu raised his sword and pointed at the guy, after which he said that he accepted his challenge. After these words, the princess of silver wolves began to attack the human light from the sky. This impact caused a large explosion that scattered large and small pieces of earth around. However, the human light remained standing in the same place in the middle of the ruins, repelling the she-wolf's attack. Zhou Yu said that the guy was pathetic and that his pathetic actions and battle tactics proved it. Yin Yao retreated and somersaulted back to the place where the ground was intact. After which she raised her head up and shouted that now it was the pervert's turn to act. Chao Yuan praised the silver wolf princess for her good work and was about to use his ice breath. He wanted to use it to create ice cubes, which would then turn into water. Chao Yuan was just above the crater in which the human light stood and sent his icy breath there. He created a large piece of ice and sent it to the ground towards the created depression. Zhou Yu didn't understand how the guy was going to defeat him using such weak attacks. But Chao Yuan shouted that he was not finished yet and was about to use his fire technique. With the help of a flaming, angry pack of wolves, he melted the ice that was in the crater. And human light ended up in the water, he was very scared and shouted for the water not to come closer. He floundered in the water, choked and with the last of his strength begged for help. Chao Yuan and Yin Yao stood on the shore and looked at the floating body of human light. And the guy finally decided to get him out of the water, the she-wolf asked what he would do with it. Yuan said that keeping this man was very risky for the future and they should kill him. Following the guy's body, Chao Yuan took out his sword from the created reservoir. Chao Yuan asked the girl not to blame him for cruelty and was going to use the sword of human light to kill him. Yin Yao turned away from the guys, and Chao Yuan put his sword on Zhou Yu's shoulder. The guy silently looked at the human light and prepared to complete his mission. But suddenly he heard that the guy was regaining consciousness and could not finish what he started. The she-wolf noticed that Chao Yuan suddenly became a gentle and good person, and decided that the guy was strange. Zhou Yu opened his eyes and quickly began to come to his senses, he looked very calm. Yin Yao also noticed that their opponent was waking up, she thought it was bad and prepared to fight. Chao Yuan continued to hold the sword in the face of the human light, and he asked if he would be killed. Chao Yuan snorted and said that even if he attacked him before he got hurt, who wouldn't attack him anymore? Zhou Yu sat near the tree and said that the couple was from the beast tribe and when he recovered, they would fight again. The she-wolf turned to Chao Yuan and whispered to him that if he didn't kill this guy now, he wouldn't have another chance. Chao Yuan frowned and tried to properly weigh the pros and cons. And although this decision was difficult for him, he took the princess and the silver wolf by the hand. Yin Yao was very surprised when she felt that she was being taken away and asked what the guy was doing. Chao Yuan followed her deep into the forest, deciding to leave the man alive. Zhou Yu looked after them and asked what kind of people lived in their tribe of beast people. Chao Yuan turned around and said that he would not take advantage of others when they are in trouble and asked him to remember that he was from the silver wolf tribe. When they were far enough away from the man, the she-wolf screamed at the guy and demanded an explanation. Chao Yuan said that this person was definitely from a group of practitioners who persecuted them before. His death would lead to even greater conflict, the princess listened and released her hand from the grip. The guy turned to her and said that at least this time he was gentle, but he guaranteed to provide her with protection next time. The girl asked the guy not to talk because she heard that someone was following them. The couple climbed a tree and from a branch watched the representatives of the fox clan who walked below. The fox asked her master why they wanted to meet them in the territory of the silver wolves. The fox said that the silver wolves were just a bunch of stupid dogs, most of which were killed by the people he lured here. The fox was going to capture the phoenix during the festival, and Chao Yuan didn't understand what he was talking about. The she-wolf explained that a phoenix lives in the depths of the burning forest and is not at its weakest during the period of rebirth. This information was the secret of the wolf tribe, a red seal appeared in the sky above the forest. Red fiery whirlwinds began to spread from her, touching everything in their path. 
Yuan asked what happened here, and the wolf tried to remember if this guy had been reincarnated before. Fire whirls through the fox into a tree next to the branch on which the couple was located. He turned his head and saw that the silver wolf princess and her husband were here and asked why they were still here. Yuan said that they should demand an explanation, they need to learn, she said that they cannot just attack. After that, all three began to fall from the tree to the ground screaming. Zhou Yu was still sitting near the tree and continued to come to his senses. He noticed strange streams of fire stood up and realized that it looked like the ancient Sunli formation. Yin Yao asked the others why this strange wind is getting hotter and hotter. Chao Yuan watched the she-wolf and said that he would not mind if the weather was hotter. The girl looked at the guy with displeasure and said that he was still the same pervert. And then she attacked him with her fists, shouting that he was heading for trouble. The fox laughed at the couple and said that he was surprised that the guy was still in the mood to flirt. He explained that this is the ancient Sunli formation, using the power of the wind to lure them into a trap. The fox said that everyone would burn in this trap and asked them to wait for their death. The silver wolf princess looked at the fox and noticed that he was fine. She later noticed that he was wearing an anti-fire necklace that belonged to the silver wolf clan. The fox did not answer where he got it from and tried to escape, but the she-wolf ordered to pursue him. But then they realized that they could not pursue him, otherwise they would be burned. Chao Yuan began to panic, turned to the princess and began to ask her to change her mind. However, the girl did not listen to the guy's requests and grabbed his wrist tightly. The girl was dragging Chao Yuan along and chasing Lan Yang and the Silver Wolves artifact. Lan Yang said that they were too slow to pursue him and would soon tremble in fear. The fox continued to run away from the Silver Wolf Princess, who was dragging the guy behind her, jumping along the branches. The girl frowned and shouted that they had to become faster if they wanted to catch the fox. Chao Yuan struggled, and the branches while the girl was dragging him, shouted for her to just give up, otherwise they would die together. The silver wolf princess looked up and noticed something flying above them. The guy also saw this and asked if Yin Yao had noticed the flying object above their heads. Lan Yang continued to move forward and was confident that no one could stop him and he would become the strongest. Well, his happiness did not last long, because the next moment something cut off his hand. His hand fell off, and the blood began to flow in rapid streams and the fox screamed. Zhou Yu turned out to be the object that was flying in the sky and it was he who cut off the fox's hand. The human light struck Lan Yen a few more times and said that he had spoken very stupid words. The fox fell face down and the man next to him was surrounded by hot currents of air. The human light asked to understand him correctly because he is not helping the fox. He pointed his sword at Yuan and said that he simply did not want such small fry to interrupt their duel. But the she-wolf and Chao Yuan turned around and began to run away in the other direction, slowly contacting the guy. The she-wolf screamed and asked why he was running away and ordered him to stop and start fighting him immediately. Chao Yuan shouted that he could not fight a person if he could not see his skills. The princess of silver wolves agreed with him and ordered him to let go of her hand. They hid behind a tree and the guy didn't understand why, despite the fact that they ran away from the circle, the air became hotter. The silver wolf princess wanted to say something, but it was very difficult for her to breathe. She fell to the ground when she lost consciousness from the heat, Chao Yuan was very afraid for her. The guy called Yin Yao, but the she-wolf did not come to her senses and continued to lie on the ground. He picked her up and tried to wake her up and understand what happened. The she-wolf was breathing heavily and sweating due to the growing heat around her, but she came to her senses. The guy picked her up and thought that after his fight with Lang Yao, he had adapted to the heat, but Yin Yao had not. Chao Yuan predicted that the fire would rise even higher and did not understand that he needed to quickly get away. The guy took the girl away from the epicenter of the heat and mentally asked her to stay alive. Someone behind them asked if he had really reached the barrier and was planning to return so soon. Chao Yuan turned around and ordered whoever was pursuing him to come out immediately. However, instead of the owner of the voice, the guy saw only a ball of fire flying towards him at high speed. And very soon he found himself at the epicenter of the explosion and was surrounded by a large amount of fire. Chao Yuan woke up in a small crater on the ground and could not understand where he was. He thought that his whole body hurt, but he didn't know why he was lying in an unknown place. The guy sat down and began to vaguely remember how he fell from the sky, hugged the fainting man, Yin Yao, and then the fireball. At that moment, 
the guy realized with horror that he was holding an unconscious Yin Yao in his arms when the ball crashed into him. He looked around and noticed that the trees were fine and there was a lake nearby, it was like a dream. The she-wolf washed the girl's hair and thanked her for allowing her to swim in such comfortable water. The girl was wrapped in a towel and told Yin Yao that it was no problem for her. Chao Yuan watched them from behind a tree and tried to figure out who this girl was. The princess of silver wolves turned a little, noticed that the guy was looking and frowned. She took a wooden bowl that was filled with water and threw it at his forehead, screaming at him to get out. The girl stood up, and the wolf covered her friend with a towel and screamed for the guy to turn away and not look. Chao Yuan lay on the grass and shouted that he did not understand how this situation happened. The girl looked at the guy and said that this was the same child who was able to survive her attack. Chao Yuan jumped up and was shocked when he recognized the voice of the man who was speaking in the sky. The princess of silver wolves began to move her ears, and was very angry with the guy. She approached him to hit him and screamed that she asked him not to turn around while they were changing clothes. The girl told the she-wolf that the child she was beating was hugging her tightly when he was attacked. Yin Yao was embarrassed and walked away from the guy, she hugged herself and said that Chao Yuan was a pervert. The red-haired girl approached the lying guy and said that she was glad to meet the baby. Chao Yuan looked at the unfamiliar girl in surprise and asked why she called him baby. The girl smiled at this and asked if she really couldn't call him that. Zhou Yu appeared behind him and asked the great phoenix to stay away from the demons. The silver wolf princess was shocked when she realized that she had been swimming and spending time with a phoenix. The red-haired girl crossed her arms and told him that he was afraid that she would sign a contract with another demon. Zhou Yu told her that Yuan was very calculating and the phoenix should stay away from him. He raised his sword at the guy and said that he was obliged to protect the phoenix, and asked if Lan Yen was surrendering. Chao Yuan began to get up and said that the guy could not know whether he would be able to escape. Zhou Yu shouted not to be blamed for impoliteness and rushed to the attack. Chao Yuan panicked when he realized that the human light was moving too fast for him to see his movements. The next moment, Zhou Yu was already behind the guy, and his sword was covered in blood. Chao Yuan felt pain and blood spurted out from his body, staining his clothes. The silver wolf princess was very scared when she saw what happened to the guy. The great phoenix opened one eye to see what happened and why the girl was screaming. Chao Yuan turned into a blade of grass and began to fall to the ground in an unconscious state. The she-wolf began to run to the guy and worriedly asked if everything was okay with him. Zhou Yu said that he used a technique that kills a person instantly, so the guy won't hear it. Yin Yao got angry at the guy and asked why it wasn't enough for him to just injure, why he had to kill. The great phoenix did not participate in their conversation and calmly looked at Chao Yuan. She asked Zhou Yu why he used this technique to kill this kid. The guy said that people kill demons and vice versa, there is no need for reasons, and asked to give him the grass. The she-wolf held a blade of grass in her hands and said that she was also a demon, she asked if the guy would kill her too. Zhou Yu pointed a sword at her and said that she was a divine beast that protected people, but he would do it if Yao got in the way. The silver wolf princess was very upset and looked at the guy boldly, she ordered him to do this. Zhou Yu told the girl that she was stupid for asking him to kill herself because of a guy. Phoenix said that he himself said that a god is a god, and a demon is a demon, and his thoughts and words do not match. Zhou Yu looked at the great phoenix and said that he himself is the light of the people, and he is not afraid. The phoenix girl raised her head and said that she was very unhappy with such an arrogant attitude. She looked at Yuan and said that he took one of her abilities and did not die. Therefore, the girl was interested in him and touched his forehead with her index finger. Zhou Yu watched in panic when he realized that the great phoenix wanted to sign a contract with the guy. He ran to stop her, but the girl had already used the blood to connect life. Zhou Yu was pushed away from them by a red beam aimed at the sky, which also knocked out his sword. The great phoenix and Yao Yuan rose above the ground and the girl said that their oath would not be broken. The red glow around them became paler as the girl directed it at the guy. Chao Yuan turned into an ordinary guy again, and the great phoenix held him in her arms. And then, to seal the contract, the girl kissed Chao Yuan on the forehead while he was unconscious. Phoenix smiled and asked the baby to wake up, because if he did, he would soon die. Chao Yuan heard the girl's voice and opened his eyes a little, coming to his senses. 
Inyao watched them from the side and felt sad when she saw their faces so close to each other. She extended her hand to him and quietly called him, calling the guy a pervert. But then she became silent and touched her heart and thought about feeling a strange sensation. Zhou Yu distracted her when he shouted that whoever signed the contract with the phoenix would die. He raised his sword and said that this time he would have to be serious, so he used the formless elephant technique. With this technique, human light moved even faster than before. In just a couple of movements, he approached the guy more than halfway, and lightning hovered around his body. Chao Yuan got scared and shouted why the guy was still trying to kill him. And this time, Chao Yuan decided to transform into a blade of grass before he was attacked. The blade of grass hit on the phoenix's chest and the guy began to shout that that guy was mocking him. The silver wolf princess was furious and screamed at him to immediately get away from the phoenix's breast. Everyone present was surprised, and Chao Yuan asked why the she-wolf was on the side of his killer. The great phoenix looked at the blade of grass and said that he was too poor, she suddenly regretted that she had signed a contract with him. Naturally, all this time the guy was unconscious and did not know what she was talking about. The girl pulled the guy out of her towel and told him to address her with respect because she was older than she looked. Phoenix said that since they are a team, she allows them to call themselves Dan. The guy told her that she was very nice and the girl smiled and said that the others said the same thing before they died. Chao Yuan felt fear when he realized that the previous participants might not have died from old age. Zhou Yu said that the person must be killed if he wants to appropriate the powers of the phoenix for himself. Phoenix said that she thought their battle would be interesting and wanted to add more people chasing them. She threw a blade of grass forward and said that in any case she would not lose anything. The guy screamed when he realized that he had been thrown towards the human light. And the phoenix herself smiled and said that she was not against killing useless partners. Chao Yuan was angry and believed that the girl was the embodiment of the devil, since she killed her team and entered into contracts. The guy screamed and flew towards Zhou Yu, who was about to attack and shouted that he couldn't escape. The human light made a sword strike at us at high speed, about to cut the blade of grass in half. Chao Yuan was in the air and shouted to himself to dodge, so his body returned from the blade. Human Light was shocked and thought it was impossible that he had dodged his blow so easily. Inya walked closer to the phoenix and asked her what was happening there. The girl stood with her eyes closed and replied that something very interesting was about to happen. A huge dark silhouette with red eyes appeared behind the girls and asked if the phoenix had signed the contract. The she-wolf turned sharply at the uninvited guest, she frowned and asked him who he was. Zhou Yu again attacked the blade of grass with many blows and shouted that it was impossible. Chao Yuan was still in the air, and every time he shouted to himself to dodge and dodged the blows. Human Light screamed that he had killed demons that were ten times stronger than him, but he could still evade. Chao Yuan said that he himself does not know why this happens and how he does it. The big white tiger greeted Dan and said that he had not seen her for several hundred years. The silver wolf princess covered the phoenix with her body and demanded that the demon introduce himself. Phoenix smiled and said that she didn't think that second brother still remembered her. The white tiger looked at the phoenix and said that, unfortunately for her, he was not here to remember her. The great phoenix was very surprised when she realized that he had come here to commit murder. Phoenix tightly grabbed the hand of the she-wolf, who was protecting her, and pulled her towards her. The girl ordered Yin Yao to run away from here as quickly as possible, and the she-wolf was surprised. The next moment, the silver wolf princess was thrown back, and the phoenix tiger began to fight. The she-wolf flew in the direction of Chao Yuan and Zhou Yu's fight, so the trajectory of her fall was a blade of grass. The girl collided with Chao Yuan while flying, and the guy was pressed to her chest. They fell to the ground, and the blade of grass under the she-wolf turned into a guy. The white tiger hit the ground smashing it into small pieces and shouted that the owner ordered the phoenix to be returned. The white tiger said that even if she had just been reborn, she should not be so weak. The white paw pressed the girl to the ground, and she asked how the divine animal accepts a human master. She looked at the tiger and said that her second brother fell because he became someone's dog. The tiger examined the claws and said that she would not understand, but his claws were as sharp as before. Yin Yao did not listen to the phoenix and instead of running away, on the contrary, she began to offend them. The girl lifted the phoenix from the ground and said that brother and sister should not be so cruel. 
The white tiger got angry and asked if the suicidal silver wolf would mind his own business. The she-wolf said that she was the future leader of the tribe and the phoenix signed a contract with her husband. The white tiger raised his paw to strike and shouted that he would kill the silver wolf. Yao closed her eyes and hugged Xiao Deng close to her, the she-wolf was preparing to receive a blow from the divine beast. But when this did not happen, she opened her eyes in surprise and looked ahead. Chao Yuan stood in front of them and blocked the white tiger's blow to protect the girls. The guy said that the tiger can hurt him, but not the wolf, so there is no need to blame him for the attack. The white tiger got angry and told the party to the treaty to take his blow. Chao Yuan held someone else's paw in his hands and told his opponent not to belittle him. The tiger retreated and said that he must return the phoenix, and whoever entered into the contract with him must die. Chao Yuan looked up at him and said that to do this, he would have to demonstrate skills. The silver wolf princess told him that the tiger was very strong and asked if he was sure he could handle it. The guy told the girl not to worry about it because he already had a plan. Yin Yao was shocked and couldn't believe what the guy was actually going to do. Chao Yuan smiled widely, laughed and said that she was right and that was his plan. He grabbed Yin Yao and the phoenix and started running away with them as fast as he could. This angered the tiger, and he shouted that the guy should not dare run away from him and would take the fight. The white tiger was about to run after him when he heard someone else's voice and turned around. A human light stood behind and said that the phoenix protected people, if he wants to kill her, he will have to deal with him first. Zhou Yu told Lan Yen that he had returned the favor he owed him. The she-wolf called the guy useless trash and ordered him to let her go. Phoenix asked if he really left that man to fight alone. Chao Yuan explained that he had no other choice and would not be able to defeat the tiger. Phoenix asked if it was normal for them to be so cowardly in front of their wife. Yin Yao became embarrassed and shouted that she married him for a special reason. Phoenix asked her partner to believe her that his strength was much greater than before. Phoenix began to say that the participant in her contract was not as reliable as Zhou Yu, and the guy got angry. He ordered them to shut up and stay here, and he would return soon. Zhou Yu slid along the ground, dodging another attack from the divine beast. The human world said it despised him for using such clumsy tactics. The white tiger admitted that the guy is not weak, but that does not mean that he cannot defeat him. Zhou Yu thought that he could fight back if he had the Sword of Fortune. Chao Yuan appeared in front of the guy and asked why Zhou Yu was giving up so quickly. Zhou Yu stood up and asked Lang Yen why he returned so unexpectedly. Chao Yuan turned to the guy and asked if he really thought that he wanted to come back for him. The system sent a warning and said that the target in front of them was invincible and advised them to retreat immediately. But Chao Yuan had no intention of retreating this time and said that he would fight here and now. The white tiger took off his cloak and thanked the guy for saving time on his search. The divine beast smiled and told the guy to advance, because they would fight with dignity. Chao Yuan darkened, grinned back and said that this is exactly what he wants. A huge white tiger charged and screamed for the guy to die. Chao Yuan carefully watched the beast's fists and waited until they were almost next to him. At this moment, the guy disappeared, and the white tiger struck the void in front of him. This greatly surprised the divine beast, and he could not understand where the guy had gone. The next moment, Chao Yuan appeared above the white tiger's head and shouted that he was here. Chao Yuan used the ravenous wolf claw technique to fight the beast. Using the effect of surprise, the guy was able to deliver a strong blow to the back of his opponent's head. Even though the attack was successful, Chao Yuan's understanding was very difficult. He jumped away from the divine beast and tried to keep his distance. The white tiger turned to the guy and asked if this was all he could do. The divine beast frowned and said that this attack didn't even hurt him. Chao Yuan called the system and told it to immediately help him find the white tiger's weakness. The system showed Chao Yuan's statistics and the tiger's ideal statistics, and then said that there was zero chance of winning. Chao Yuan became gloomy and thought that the phoenix said that he could defeat the white tiger. The guy decided that there was no point in continuing the fight and said that he would see him next time and began to run away again. The white tiger was surprised and said that it was wrong that he wanted to be a hero, but did not want to die. The divine beast tried to hit the guy and shouted that it was very strange that he couldn't hit. Zhou Yu watched them fight from behind a tree and thought that she also felt this unusual feeling. Chao Yuan realized that his body was reflexively dodging, so the divine beast could not hit him. 
So the guy came up with a new plan and decided that he would simply wear out his opponent. The white tiger looked at the guy in surprise and asked if he really thought that he would be able to exhaust him. Chao Yuan said that he couldn't hit him, so he just had to bide his time. The divine beast said that he had already seen his tricks and it wouldn't work. Chao Yuan became afraid when he realized that he was being attacked and that he did not have enough time to evade. The theme of the white tiger flashed past him so quickly that he didn't even have time to understand anything. Blood flowed from his shoulder, and the white tiger said that he had successfully hit him. Chao Yuan was clutching his wound and couldn't understand what had just happened. He looked at his hand in horror and thought that the white tiger would soon suddenly increase in size. Zhou Yu looked out from behind the tree and thought he was wondering why he couldn't see the tricks. Human Light heard the voice of the phoenix, she said it was because he didn't know her enough. The girl said that after signing the contract, the baby studied Sun Li's information, which came from her ability. Zhou Yu said that it was impossible, if the enemy used the wind, he would feel the impulses. Phoenix confirmed that this is theoretically true, but she can use it to determine the position of enemies. The system told Chao Yuan that the enemy was preparing for the next attack, he had better get ready. The white tiger turned to the guy and said that this time he would just blow him up. An exact image of the white tiger attack that he wanted to make appeared on the guy's head. Chao Yuan's eyes widened when he realized that it was only in his head. The white tiger approached him, and the guy slowly realized that he had seen a trace of his movement. Chao Yuan thought that no matter what, he must avoid the divine beast's blows. The white tiger raised his hand to strike and prepared to destroy the guy in one motion. However, thanks to the fact that the guy already knew what the attack would be, he managed to dodge. The white tiger turned to him and said that, despite his predictions, he would not be able to fight with him. Moreover, soon the guy will slowly die from loss of blood, but Chao Yuan said that he did not understand what he was talking about. He removed his hand from the place where the wound was and showed the white tiger absolutely healthy skin. The divine beast looked at the stranger's hand in shock and asked where his wound was. Chao Yuan said that he is a grass demon and his regeneration is much faster than everyone else. The princess of silver wolves covered her face with her hands from the strong currents of wind. She opened her eyes and saw that they were very high, it amazed her. She began to actively look at everything around her and ask where they were. Phoenix asked to watch carefully and not move so erratically. Inyao saw the fight between her husband and the tiger and screamed that the feminine beast was about to kill him. But the great phoenix remained calm and told her not to worry. Chao Yuan missed the divine beast's blow and was thrown back, so the guy began to fall. The divine beast said that the guy knows he can't win, so why waste time? Chao Yuan said that the beast attacked his wife, brother and his pet, and he would not remain a man if they responded in kind. The she-wolf got angry and shouted that she was not his wife and that it was all bullshit, the phoenix was surprised. Inyao asked Miss Deng for permission to go downstairs to help the guy. But the great phoenix took the girl by the hand and tried to calm her down. The silver wolf princess turned to look at the girl and hear her answer. And the phoenix asked her to take her time and let her deal with it herself. The white tiger said that since the guy was so stubborn, he would try his special technique on him. The technique was called, three soldiers shoot down a general, and it was a real killing curse. Chao Yuan looked down and saw that a bright blue light had appeared below him. This color formed a seal that looked like a snowflake. White Tiger said that when he uses this skill, everyone gets hit in the chest area. The divine beasts used the skill, and a blue beam of bright light rushed into the sky at the place where Chao Yuan stood. Zhou Yu said that he was seriously injured by these skills and would have lost if he had not used the hidden technique. The wolf heard that the human light called the guy Lan Yen, and said that his name was not that. The guy remembers exactly that when he was rescued from the water, the man introduced himself as Lan Yen, the pride of the demons. This information made the guy doubt everything he knew before. Chao Yuan examined himself as the blue light around him dissipated and noticed that he was unharmed. The guy told the white tiger that his skill was absolutely ineffective against someone like him. The white tiger got angry and decided that the man had deceived him and promised to kill him after Chao Yuan. The guy prepared to fight, and asked if the divine beast was attacking again. Chao Yuan used the frost breath technique to attack the white tiger. The divine beast knew that the power of the phoenix was important to the master and was trying to figure out how he could capture it this time. Chao Yuan heard someone from above shouting that he was coming and asking him to catch her. When the guy turned around, 
he saw that the phoenix was joyfully flying down. He got angry and asked her what she was doing here and in general why she didn't fly if she could. The guy rushed to the girl to catch her, but she said that he was right and began to levitate in the air. Chao Yuan didn't understand why she came and asked what she was going to do. The girl said she wasn't going to do anything special and just wanted to help. Then she looked at the guy and said that he was a man named Chao Yuan. The guy got angry and shouted why the girl used his real name, because now a curse can be used against him. Phoenix looked up at him and said that she was just a pet, so why couldn't she say the owner's name? She bowed and said it didn't matter since she was just a pet. Chao Yuan realized that the girl had heard everything and was now angry with him and panicked. The white tiger next to them did not despair and again put marks on them that looked like snowflakes. The divine beast laughed and said that he was very grateful to the phoenix. The girl said that she knew very well that in order to use this skill, his claws must touch the floor. She flew up to his face and said that at this moment he would not be able to move. Phoenix used the red seal and said that he was very careful and didn't think about who he was fighting against. The white tiger screamed and a large yellow ball appeared opposite his body. The great phoenix used Sun's formation of the first wind warrior skill. The white wolf mentally ordered himself to calm down and said that, despite the attack, it would not harm him. But while he was thinking about it, it turned out that the phoenix was not going to attack and ran away with Yuan. Phoenix turned to the guy and asked him to run faster, because if he gets hurt, she won't be able to save him. Chao Yuan was being dragged along, and the guy was shouting for the girl to stop. Zhou Yu hovered in the sky directly above the white tiger and was about to attack it. Lightning appeared on the guy's sword and he told the tiger to try his attack after he borrowed his luck. The divine beast did not expect to hear a voice behind him, and when he turned around, he was very surprised. Zhou Yu flew towards him from the sky surrounded by lightning and shouted that the tiger should get what he deserved. Human Light was very angry and used all his powers to defeat the white tiger. Therefore, he used his strongest fortune sword technique and many lightning bolts flew towards the tiger. Zhou Yu's attack hit its target and created a huge explosion, with a tiger at the epicenter. Chao Yuan was shocked and said that he was lucky not to experience this technique. But the phoenix explained to the guy that Zhou Yu was unintentionally allowing him to win. She explained to the guy that luck is a form of natural wealth that everyone has. But for some they are so weak that they are insignificant, while for others it may be more than that of an entire nation. Phoenix said that Zhou Yu is one of those who can turn untapped luck into an attack. The girl said that he had lost some of his fortune and was unable to use this attack in the fight with Yuan. Chao Yuan remembered the times when he was able to take his opponents by surprise and understood what the system meant. Zhou Yu's sword was stuck into the ground next to the white tiger's hand, and they were in the crater. The guy took his sword and looked carefully at the white tiger, which lay motionless. Zhou Yu was surprised that this guy was able to withstand such a huge blow. They stood in the center of the crater, which was formed after the explosion, and went 10 meters deep. Zhou Yu climbed out of the crater and Chao Yuan shouted to the phoenix that the guy was coming towards them. Human Light said that he couldn't be on the other side this time, but he would kill you on the next time they met. Chao Yuan was indignant and shouted that if he had not come to save him, Zhou Yu would have died. The man said that he had to explain one thing to Yuan, and he hoped that the guy would not misunderstand. Chao Yuan stood in front of the guy and waited for him to tell him something that would explain his position. Zhou Yu said that he was not like Yuan and they were not friends or brothers when the she-wolf found them. After that, he said goodbye and began to leave, and Yin Yao wanted to call the pervert. But then she realized that she didn't want to address him that way and stopped with her hand outstretched. She remained silent and pressed it to her chest, thinking about how to address Chao Yuan. The Silver Wolf Princess felt extremely embarrassed as she collected her thoughts. But then she still loudly called Chao Yuan's name and the guy turned around. He pointed to himself and asked if Yin Yao had just called him. The she-wolf regained her impartial face and asked if there was something wrong with the way she called him. Yin Yao blushed again and couldn't understand what was wrong with her and why she was doing all this. Phoenix said she would go seal the white tiger and asked the couple to go somewhere. Chao Yuan took Yin Yao by the hand and led him along, and he asked the phoenix to be careful. The princess of silver wolves did not resist and allowed the guy to lead her away from the phoenix. The girl felt embarrassed, but tried not to show it too much. The great phoenix was left alone with the white tiger when she heard that 600 years had already passed. 
Xiao Dan turned to the tiger and asked if he had already woken up. The tiger said that 600 years had passed since the phoenix stopped protecting people, but she had not yet met such partners. The great phoenix looked at the divine beast and said that she did not understand who he was talking about. But the white tiger said that she didn't need to ask since this guy's fighting style was the same. The girl did not allow the white tiger to finish and screamed at him to shut up immediately. The air around the phoenix began to heat up and she said that if the tiger called his name, she would tear off his head. The ground near the phoenix began to crumble, and she told the tiger not to mention that name to her. She was very angry and said that otherwise she would simply tear off the white tiger's head. The divine tiger felt the strong aura of the phoenix and immediately agreed to remain silent. The girl calmed down a little and said that it didn't matter and this time the tiger wouldn't be able to leave. When Xiao Deng finished, she looked up at the sky and asked her the she-wolf and Yuan had gone. Yin Yao sat under a tree and said that it seemed to her that the guy was afraid of the great phoenix. Chao Yuan approached her and said that there was too much darkness in her soul. The she-wolf said that the girl seemed nice and that she was a very good strategist. Chao Yuan asked how he, a pure and innocent person, should face an ancient demon. Yin Yao started pinching the guy's cheek and telling him not to insult the phoenix. The she-wolf was sure that even if Xiao Deng could not cope, the guy already had a backup plan. Chao Yuan rubbed his cheek and said that he was in a state of passion at that moment. Yin Yao got angry and started screaming why the guy came back to fight the tiger then. But the princess of silver wolves stopped screaming when she noticed the guy's hands. Chao Yuan apologized and admitted to the girl that he could not control the trembling in them since the beginning of the battle. The girl turned away and said that it was his own fault and he had nothing to apologize to her for. She said that Chao Yuan knew that he had no choice but still returned. The guy noticed the strange behavior of the she-wolf and asked if she was really worried about him. The princess of the silver wolves kicked the guy and screamed that he said nonsense and was generally her slave. Chao Yuan fell to the ground, and Yin Yao felt guilty, so she apologized. Chao Yuan stood up and started shouting how a girl could treat an injured person like that. This made Yin Yao angry and she started shouting back at the guy so that he knew his place. After that, she calmed down, smiled sweetly and thanked the guy for saving her. The she-wolf suggested going back because they still needed to attend the demon festival. Chao Yuan sat on the grass and looked at the girl as if he was seeing her for the first time. Yin Yao extended her hand to help him and asked him to get up from the ground. Chao Yuan smiled at the she-wolf and continued to carefully examine the happy girl. He extended his hand, and the silver wolf princess grabbed it tightly. Yin Yao took a step back and pulled Chao Yuan along with her, smiling happily. She looked the guy in the eyes and said that it was time for them to continue their journey. Yin Yao held Chao Yuan's hand and led him along, they walked slowly through the forest. The guy was surprised and tried to understand why the she-wolf looked so beautiful today. Chao Yuan stopped and called the princess and asked if she was in love with him. Yin Yao was confused and scared when she heard Chao Yuan's question, she didn't know what to do. And the she-wolf's first reaction was to hit the guy to avoid an answer. She hit the guy hard in the side, and he felt a sharp pain as he fell again. Chao Yuan was on the floor screaming that Yin Yao had hit him right in the kidney. The girl said that if the guy continues to talk nonsense, he will not let him go next time. She snorted and turned away while the guy held the bruised area and called her a scary woman. Chao Yuan started walking towards the girl and asked Yin Yao to stop being angry with him. They both stopped and fell silent and they saw a huge white tiger in front of them. The divine beast turned towards the couple, and they were afraid of his gaze. Chao Yuan shielded the girl and asked why this guy was still here. Chao Yuan attacked the white tiger with the greedy wolf claw technique. It worked and the divine beast was immediately thrown back into the trees, although the attack was not strong. Chao Ban was surprised and could not understand whether the tiger had really weakened so much during this time. A tiger's head began to appear from the cloud of dust, and he said that Yuan had a bad memory. A tiger cub appeared in front of them, shouting that Yuan should not dare to use such force against him. Yin Yao looked at the little white tiger in shock and couldn't believe that he was like this now. The girl grabbed the fluffy one in her arms and began to hug him, despite the indignation of others. Phoenix said she could be sure that the tiger was safely sealed since the guy was still alive. Phoenix was sitting on a tree branch, and Chao Yuan said that he should have at least tried. Xiao Jian smiled and said that this was logical and although she wanted to check it, she did not expect such an answer. 
The white tiger in the arms of the she-wolf shouted that as soon as he regained his strength, he would tear the guy apart. Chao Yuan took the white tiger cub by the scruff of the neck and held it in front of him. The tiger cub calmed down a little and asked the guy what he was going to do with him. Chao Yuan smiled ominously and said that he would let him experience how amazing he was. The guy took the piece of paper and began to count to three, and then allow the tiger cub to jump. The white tiger cub got angry and shouted that he was actually not some kind of cat. Phoenix jumped down to the she-wolf and asked if they were going to participate in the demon festival. Inyao confirmed this and said that they were going with the guy because he was the future leader of the clan. Phoenix said that this wouldn't work, because the guy had to go with her and the girl would be alone. Xiao Deng said that she would borrow her husband for a while and that they should guard her all the way to the capital. Inyao said that the capital belongs to the people, but the guy did not understand what they were talking about. Phoenix took the tiger cub by the tail and told him to behave. Chao Yuan did not want to accompany the white tiger and Phoenix and asked if she could go alone. Xiao Deng said that she was just a little girl and if she went alone, she would be bullied. Chao Yuan realized that they could not get rid of this trip and became very upset. He walked up to Yin Yao and hugged her waist from behind, pulling her closer to him. After that, he asked the phoenix if she would really separate them on their honeymoon. The silver wolf princess became very angry at Chao Yuan's behavior. The girl broke away from the hug and began to answer so that the pervert would take his hands off her. Chao Yuan asked her to be quiet and said that she could help them get out of this situation. Yin Yao listened, took his hand and said that she really couldn't part with the guy. Xiao Deng said that she was reborn and signed a contract with Yuan and now needs his protection. Chao Yuan listened to the phoenix and fell for her charm and said that it sounded right. Yin Yao became gloomy and said that he just saw a cute little girl, and he was attracted to it. He walked up to Xiao Deng and began to say that he would like to go, but Yin Yao is too weak. The silver wolf princess felt her heart break when her boyfriend called her weak. She was angry and annoyed when she walked up to the guy and put her hand on his shoulder. The girl called out to him, and then clasped her hands around his waist. The she-wolf shouted that the guy called her weak and threw Chao Yuan over her shoulder. The pair began to fight, raising clouds of dust, and the phoenix actively supported the she-wolf. After the fight, Yin Yao threw back her hair and said that if the guy dies, then let the phoenix return the body. Chao Yuan lay on the ground, crying, and thought that his life was very difficult. The she-wolf was leaving and told the guy to watch her win at the festival when he returned. Chao Yuan told the phoenix that he would be angry if something happened to Yin Yao, but Deng promised to protect her. A feather appeared on the she-wolf's shoulder blade, and warm gusts of wind imperceptibly surrounded her. Xiao Deng turned to the guy and said that returning to the main topic, she wanted to ask something. A slightly scary smile appeared on her lips as she turned to the guy. And she shocked Chao Yuan when she asked if he knew about being reborn in another world. Xiao Deng asked Chao Yuan if he had heard anything about being reborn in another world. The guy was afraid that his identity had been revealed, but then he realized that she was talking about another person. Xiao Deng carefully looked at the guy's face, waiting for the answer she needed. And then she asked him to forget about it, because he was just a lower demon and she thought too much. Phoenix told the tiger cub to follow her and reminded him of the cursed mark, because of which he would not be able to escape. The tiger cub said that he has his own ways, Xiao Dan is the guy ready. And when he asked what he was ready for, Phoenix decided that she had signed a contract with an idiot and asked if he was taking his time. The girl placed a seal against her chest and prepared to begin the ritual. She closed her eyes and energy began to accumulate in her hands as she said, Sun, third form, auxiliary movement. A yellow circle appeared on the ground under the feet of the phoenix and Yuan, which was accompanied by a beam into the sky. Soon this circle began to glow even brighter and red lightning began to appear around it. Chao Yuan looked at his feet and saw that there was nothing there except a bright light. He covered his face with his hands, then closed his eyes and frowned, preparing to fall. But this did not happen, and Chao Yuan realized that he was hanging in the air, he began to look at the ground. And I realized that in a matter of seconds they were right above the capital. Phoenix waved to the tiger cub and the guy and told them to follow her because she was familiar with this place. Chao Yuan shouted for her to wait a minute, but both he and the white tiger were already falling down. The only one who was not afraid of falling was Xiao Deng, she was happy and enjoyed the flight. White Tiger and Chao Yuan fell face down on the ground and left imprints of their bodies in the ground. 
The guy raised his head to the phoenix and shouted, couldn't she have warned them about this? Xiao Dan stood right above them and said that the guy is a very unreliable person. Chao Yuan stood up and began to look around, and then asked why the surrounding area was so barren if this place was the capital. The girl told them to follow me because there were a lot of people around the city area and she didn't feel comfortable walking around there. Moreover, their target was here and Chao Yuan was wondering what the girl meant. It turned out that the original place was very developed, and only 600 years later it became so. Phoenix approached the cliff and asked the guy how long it would look like this. Xiao Dan stood near the cliff and asked if the guy knew why this place became like this. Chao Yuan said that other than natural disasters, the reason for such a piece of land to become neglected could only be caused by a strong external force. Xiao Deng listened to his thoughts and nodded contentedly, then she said that the guy is very smart. The system warned the guy about an invincible enemy and asked him to stay away from him. Chao Yuan asked if the invincible opponents would ever end and looked up. Next to him and Xiao Dan stood a huge water snake, which was another invincible opponent. The guy has never seen this before and asked the phoenix what else it is. The water serpent growled and began to quickly approach them, getting ready to attack. Chao Yuan closed the girl with him and shouted for Xiao Deng to move away. The guy used the frost breathing technique, and the water serpent froze, turning into an ice statue. At that moment, they heard someone else's voice nearby, who said that this was impressive. A turtle appeared behind them, asking the great phoenix if this guy was her new contractor. The turtle had bright green eyes and distinct spots all over its body. This creature also had a shell from which only its paws and head showed. Chao Yuan had never seen anything like this before and asked in a panic what else it was. Xiao Dan asked her companion to keep his mouth shut, and the guy fell nearby in shock. The turtle greeted the great phoenix and said that they had not seen each other for a long time. Xiao Deng replied that today she did not have time to reminisce with her fourth great uncle. Then the fourth great uncle said that they could solve the matter the old way and smoke appeared around him. Chao Yuan tried to understand what kind of fog this was and asked the phoenix if it was an illusion of her grandfather. Xiao Deng said that this is both an illusion and reality and asked to be careful, otherwise they will really die. Phoenix explained that according to the old rules, you need to break through the illusion and see your grandfather, but she could not cope with this before. She winked at the guy and said that she didn't have the opportunity to do this, so she needed Chao Yuan. Xiao Dan noticed that the guy was about to leave and asked where he was going ahead of time. Chao Yuan shouted that he was running away to find Yin Yao, and her problems had nothing to do with him. The great phoenix stopped him and said that the guy would no longer be able to escape from here. Chao Yuan still continued to run and could not understand why he had to stay here and risk his life. He looked forward again and opened his eyes wide in surprise when he saw the girl in front of him. Xiao Deng changed her clothes to underwear and charmingly asked if he was going to leave now. She looked at him carefully and asked if he wanted to stay here a little longer. She looked at him carefully and asked if he wanted to stay here a little longer. Chao Yuan stopped and began to deny and said that he was an honest young man. Phoenix tucked a strand of hair behind her ear and asked if she could ask this honest man to give her clothes back. Chao Yuan didn't understand what she was talking about and looked down at his hands when he felt the fabric in them. And then he saw that he was actually holding in his hands the dress that Xiao Deng had previously worn. He quickly threw it out of his hands, became embarrassed, and tried to understand when it ended up in his hands. Chao Yuan fell to the ground and began to crawl away from the girl and make excuses that everything was not at all as it seemed. Xiao Deng picked up her dress from the floor and noticed that her clothes were now dirty. She leaned over to the guy and said that then she simply would not wear it and Chao Yuan became nervous. The great phoenix enjoyed the guy's reaction and laughed at his expression. After that, she walked away a little and asked if the guy didn't think it was good. She turned and asked the guy which part of not wearing clothes was not good. Chao Yuan looked at the girl and could not believe that she really had such a good figure. Xiao Dan pressed herself against his hand and began to ask why he didn't fight with her brother and why he came to watch her bathe. Chao Yuan, who had previously been absorbed by the softness of someone else's skin, now tried to remember when he fought with her brother. But the girl touched his chest again, distracting him from these thoughts. Chao Yuan then realized that this was not his memory, but an illusion of her fourth great uncle. The great phoenix, well, look him straight in the eyes and ask why he doesn't talk to her anymore. 
Chao Yuan was silent and mentally ordered himself to resist this and plausible illusion. Xiao Deng threw the guy in his underwear to the ground, this scene was watched from the portal. The man said that this man also cannot escape his seas in the illusion of fields. The man said that for a hundred years, people and demons became allies thanks to Jian Shen. The girl asked to stop and said that all this was in the past, and she had already forgotten about him. The man asked why she brought him here then, couldn't she bring the tiger alone? Xiao Deng looked at her fourth great uncle and tried to figure out how to answer this question. And then, with tears in her eyes, she asked why her grandfather kills everyone she brings. The great phoenix cried and quietly said that she just wanted to see him again. Xiao Dan fell to her knees and continued to cry and quietly said that she just wanted to see him. The man asked if she knew that multiple contracts would result in weakened powers until death. He approached the girl and said that there would be no great loss if he killed this little demon. And the man was very surprised when he heard the voice of Chao Yuan, who asked if he really thought that he could take his life. Grandfather turned and asked the guy how he was able to escape from his illusion. Chao Yuan looked relaxed and said that he still hadn't done it, but that was for now. The great phoenix's fourth great uncle closed his eyes and couldn't believe that this guy was here. Chao Yuan pointed to his head and said that sealing all his senses was the same trick as dodging attacks. Its essence was to use the computational method of Sun formation systems to catch the air flow around it. Chao Yuan copied the water serpent technique and now a column of water began to form near him. The man sat down and said that since the guy got through his equipment, there was no point in continuing the tests. Chao Yuan stopped preparing to attack and said that he knew that the man was not that easy to deal with. The guy said that even after so many years, the old man had not gotten any better. After that, he opened his eyes and looked at the man, but now his eyes have changed and become a bright yellow color. Fourth great uncle couldn't believe that he was seeing Jiang Shen in front of him. Xiao Dan stopped crying and looked with wide eyes at the one she had been waiting for for so long. There was a white light around the guy, and he thought that no one should have heard or seen him now, but it looks like that. Grandfather closed his eyes and thought that he had the feeling that a snake was looking at him and the slightest movement would reveal his position. He stood on the ground, leaning on a stick, and continued to feel threatened. Chao Yuan's eyes were closed as he suddenly realized that it was time for him to move forward. He pushed off the ground and quickly jumped forward because he felt what he needed. The guy flew up to his grandfather and extended his hand to him, the man looked at someone else's hand and realized that he would not have time to react. Therefore, in the next second, the man's throat was in Chao Yuan's hands, and he began to cough. Chao Yuan looked at the man and said that if you avoid his illusion, then he is actually not that strong. They stood in the center of a round red seal, and the guy lifted his grandfather from the ground. Xiao Dan looked at what was happening in shock and suddenly realized that the guy was using her sun formation. The fourth great uncle smiled contentedly and told the guy to stop because that was enough. Chao Yuan, who had yellow eyes, turned to Xiao Deng. He smiled and called her baby and said that they had not seen each other for a long time. The fourth great uncle carefully watched the guy and looked at the color of his eyes. The man thought that now it became clear to him what method he used to escape. The great phoenix heard the guy call her baby, and couldn't believe that it was really Jiang Shen in front of her. The guy came up to her, touched the girl and began to say that she didn't have to cry anymore. Jiang Shen hugged the great phoenix and said that this is what he owed her 600 years ago. After that, the guy kissed her on the forehead, Jiang Shen put all his feelings into this kiss. Chao Yuan's eyes slowly returned to their normal green color, returning his consciousness. Therefore, the guy was very surprised when he woke up and realized that he was hugging Xiao Dan. The great phoenix stood in front of him very embarrassed and did not look him in the eyes, think about something of her own. Chao Yuan didn't remember what happened, so he was now in a quandary. He turned to his grandfather and said that although he did not know what happened here, he did not plan to stay here. He began to run away because he needed to return to Inyao, and he did not pay attention to the screams of the phoenix. Fifteen minutes before this, the guy was lying on the grass, pressed by Xiao Deng's body. He closed his eyes and began to mentally repeat that all this was nothing and that he should not fall into the trap of false illusions. At this moment, the system issued an alert that his conscious being required an answer. After that, a blonde man with long hair and yellow eyes appeared in front of him, who greeted him hesitantly. 
Chao Yuan looked at his legs and saw that they were gone from the place where they should be covered with a dissipating haze. Chao Yuan was very scared when he realized that right now there was a real ghost standing in front of him. He pointed to the ghost and asked who he was, the guy introduced himself as half Jian Shen. Chao Yuan asked if he was Jiang Shen, the one who gave birth to human potential. The blonde nodded and said that at that time demons and humans were enemies, but he forced them to stop fighting. And the baby phoenix began to have feelings for him at that time, Chao Yuan didn't understand what was happening. Jiang Shen revealed that one of the human families passed on the people, and they used the ancestors to ambush him. The guy sadly said that that technique endowed the whole family with enormous power. But there was one drawback, in exchange for this power, people had to turn into demons. And that human family made such sacrifices and each of them turned into a demon. Chao Yuan was surprised that the technique reborn people into demons and asked if they really were demons now. Jiang Shen confirmed his guesses and said that the goal of these demons now is to destroy humanity. The guy said that when he was attacked, they sealed half of his soul and could not understand that the second was in an illusion. Chao Yuan realized that he was still in the illusion of that old eccentric. Jian Shen said that this is not just an illusion, but a separate dimension, Chao Yuan asked how he could get out of here. But the ghost said that he should not rush to agree to one condition first. The ghost wanted the guy to share the body with him, and they would save a lot of people. Chao Yuan ran away and tried to understand how saving people was related to using Xiao Deng. The great phoenix soon caught up with him and screamed for the guy to immediately stop in place. She demanded that he immediately explain what had just happened. Chao Yuan turned around again and said that he was rushing to the festival to find Yin Yao. And he wouldn't play phoenix games, but Xiao Deng was determined to follow the guy. These words made Chao Yuan stop and look at the girl in front of him in surprise. Xiao Deng wanted to follow the guy because she knew that he was definitely related to Jiang Shen. The tiger cub finally stood up and asked if it was Jiang Shen for real, but the man said that it didn't matter and asked why the tiger attacked her. At that moment, two red eyes appeared behind the white tiger, asking why he came in such a shabby state. Tiger Cub turned to his master and said that he had failed, so he was sealed by the phoenix. The demon shouted that the white tiger was just trash and extended his hand to him to remove the seal from him. Phoenix, Chao Yuan and Grandfather turned towards the demon's voice and were shocked and they saw what was happening next to them. Now, instead of a tiger cub, a huge white tiger stood in front of them and growled at them. Chao Yuan asked the phoenix what happens to the tiger if the girl sealed it just recently. The girl appeared in front of them and told them to leave, and he would deal with the tiger himself. The phoenix's fourth great uncle frowned and shouted to put the demon enslaved divine beast to shame. The man on the throne said that Xian Wu had fallen into a trap and asked his subjects to bring him here. The fire wolf said that he would take the artifact and fulfill the instructions of his master. Lan Yang had a golden artifact in his hand, and the red stone was beckoning. The man on the throne turned to the pig and ordered him to go to the festival. He held a phoenix feather in his hands and said that the silver wolf had her mark, and the pig had to catch it. The princess of the silver wolves participated in the tournament duel, under the gaze of spectators. The girl quickly defeated her opponent, and he rolled away from her to another part of the arena. The judge announced that Yin Yao was the winner, earning his fifth consecutive victory. The girl believed that there were no worthy opponents here when she heard someone say that she was too arrogant. Days later, a pig appeared and asked to look into the face of the princess of the silver wolves. Yin Yao remained calm and waited for her new opponent to get close enough to her. As they stood opposite each other, the girl said that she didn't remember seeing him there before. And then she added that it wasn't that important and she just hoped that the pig would last longer than the others. Soon after these words, a pool of blood appeared in the arena, which became increasingly larger. The pig held the she-wolf by the head and laughed at the fact that she lost, despite her arrogant words. The family said that he thought that the person chosen by the phoenix would be strong enough. The demon threw the she-wolf onto the floor of the arena and turned away from her, starting to walk away in the other direction. The pig shouted that he was not having fun here and he should just kill everyone here. And the princess of the silver wolves lay unconscious on the floor of the arena and was seriously injured. The pig looked at the audience and said that now he simply had to kill everyone here. The audience looked at him in disbelief and decided that he was joking and simply could not speak seriously. Behind the crowd, another man appeared in a black hood, completely hidden by a robe. 
The guy snorted because all these demons didn't understand that they were in danger. Chao Yuan was running towards the she-wolf through the forest when the system said that a strange unknown field had been spotted. The system also told the guy that a chain of new tasks had been discovered, so let's ignore the recommendation for now. Chao Yuan felt that Yi Niao was in danger and since he was already near the arena, he jumped off the ground. The guy landed next to the she-wolf and attracted the attention of the pig, but Yuan himself did not pay attention to this. He picked up the princess of silver wolves in his arms and told her that everything would be fine and now he was nearby. The girl came to her senses, looked at the guy and asked Chao Yuan what he was doing here. The pig pointed at the guy and shouted for him to explain who he was, the she-wolf warned that the enemy was strong. The guy nodded and turned to the pig, he told the demon that he had injured his wife, and this was unforgivable. Chao Yuan closed his eyes and began to create an ice sword in his hands in a matter of seconds. Soon he held the hilt of the sword in his hands, and he was ready to fight the one who injured Yao. He looked at the pig and told it to try his new sword technique. The pig looked at the guy carefully and said that this was just a weak trick. Chao Yuan was focused and confident in his abilities and rushed to attack the demon. He used another technique called Shapeless Elephant, and a huge number of blows fell on the pig. Yin Yao was shocked when she learned from this technique who was using human light in the fight against Chao Yuan. The guy told her that it was her, but after freezing the damage increases so much. The pig demon did receive some injuries, but it turned out that he only became angry. The demon screamed that the guy couldn't really think he could harm him and called him over. Both immediately rushed towards each other to start a fight again. Many blue veins began to spread throughout Chao Yuan's body, slowing down his movements. The same effect began to appear on the pig demon, also greatly weakening it. Yin Yao saw that the freezing effect was beginning to harm the guy and understood that he might not survive. The pig demon said that his actions were slowing down at such a rate that he would lose sooner. Just at this moment, the system finished analyzing frost damage and developing protective measures. Chao Yuan raised his sleeve and asked the pig why he started such a long battle. The system began to repair the damage and the pig demon could not believe his eyes. Chao Yuan jumped to attack the enemy and shouted that the only one who was becoming slow was him. The pig demon looked helplessly at the approaching guy and realized that he did not have time to do anything. Therefore, the very next moment the pig demon was severely wounded and fell to the floor. The ice sword remained sticking out of the pig's body and the guy said that he was too careless. The huge body of the pig demon fell into the arena behind Chao Yuan with a crash. The guy pointed at Yu and said that this was payback for Yin Yao, and he added so that the pig would not blame him. At this moment, a man appeared behind the guy and said that Chao Yuan was also suffering from carelessness. The princess of the silver wolves saw that the guy was in danger and screamed for him to turn around. Chao Yuan heard the warning and began to turn back to see what was happening. But the man was already too close and with a crazy smile he shouted at me that it was now too late. The man's palm lit up with purple fire and Chao Yuan was lifted into the air. Invaded by unknown forces and temporarily went into hibernation while the guy was consumed by purple fire. The silver wolf princess did not want to be left out, she rushed to the attack and ordered, I can let the guy go. However, the man easily dodged her blow, and he was able to move away from her unharmed. The man jumped several meters, and Chao Yuan fell to the arena floor. The man looked at the silver wolf princess and said that it was too troublesome and he completely forgot about her. Yin Yao was very worried about the guy and began to help him get up, asking if everything was okay with him. The man smiled and said that now not only was his system broken, but all the skills he used were sealed. Chao Yuan asked how this man knew about the system and realized that this guy also knew something about rebirth. However, the man did not answer his questions and said that there was no point in telling a dead man anything. Chao Yuan prepared to fight and asked if the man seriously thought that he had nothing left. The guy's hands glowed green and he pressed them to the floor to use his powers. Next to the man, a sprout appeared from under the concrete floor and began to rapidly turn into a tree. Many branches grabbed the man from different sides, causing him to scream and ask what the guy was doing. Chao Yuan said that although his skills are sealed, he is now using his own because he is a grass demon. Yin Yao ordered him to stop and said that using natural energy would shorten his life. But Chao Yuan did not listen to the girl and said that he was not finished yet and made a seal in front of his chest. The branches that were holding the man immediately lit up with a bright flame, 
burning the man. Inyao watched the guy's actions and said that this is the same thing that the phoenix created back then in the forest. The man could not get out of the fire and screamed in pain, but no one was in a hurry to help him. The guy's hands were covered in burns, but he was too glad that he succeeded. Inyao was very worried about him and asked if he was okay while the guy examined his wounds. The girl also saw and carefully took his hand in hers, but Yuan asked her not to worry about the slight burn. The silver wolf princess brought his hand to her mouth or wounded her husband again. This surprised the guy, and the she-wolf said that all wolves usually lick each other's wounds. She was a little confused and asked ere the phoenix with whom she traveled together had gone. The guy remembered that when they were approaching the festival site, Xiao Deng fell behind him. And when he asked why the girl said that someone was following them, and she would go and deal with them. It was for this reason that Chao Yuan and the great phoenix had to split up. Their conversation was interrupted by the voice of a man who said that they have time to coup when they are on the verge of death. The couple turned in surprise at the man who was emerging from the thick smoke. The man who was supposed to burn alive came out to them completely unharmed and said that he didn't care what to look at. Chao Yuan could not believe that the man remained unharmed after such an attack. It turned out that his opponent was able to turn the forces he had collected into a shield. The man rushed to attack, punching the guy right through and shouted that he was also capable of turning this power into a deadly weapon. Chao Yuan was severely wounded in the stomach and was thrown back by the men. The silver wolf princess was horrified when she saw this, helplessly screaming her husband's name. She wanted to help again, but the man hit her and threw her in the opposite direction. Then he pressed her to the floor with his foot and asked what it was like when the only ray of hope dies. He pressed harder on the girl, causing her to cough and causing her many injuries. The man laughed loudly, covering his face with his hand, and he said it was a wonderful battle. He looked at everyone else present and said that from now on, my race of demon trainers will rule over them. The audience was shocked and they realized that Yin Yao herself had been broken by a powerful man. A pressing, strong magical aura emanated from the man, which frightened those around him even more. Someone shouted that everyone who was here should quickly run away, otherwise they would die. And while the man was enjoying the commotion he had caused among the locals, Chao Yuan stood on his feet. The man turned around and couldn't believe that the guy was completely fine. And at that moment, he was surrounded by three Chao Yuans, the man looked around carefully and examined each of the guys. And after that he smiled contentedly and said that now everything became clear to him. There were several more copies of Chao Yuan around when the man said that he understood everything. The man said that it now became clear to him that Chao Yuan had learned the sea in the field's technique. The system activated the next mission to steal luck and gave 300 seconds to complete it, otherwise the guy would die. The guy understood that 300 seconds was very little and the drop fell to the floor. He ordered all his clones to move and attack the man now, and a fight began. However, despite Chao Yuan's best efforts, it was useless, because the man easily fought off all opponents. He threw away another clone and said that here, if he was not mistaken, then the Yuan system turned on, and he had a few seconds left before death. The system began the countdown, you said it was preparing instant death. The guy ran out of time and started coughing, coughing up blood on the floor. At that moment, a man approached him and said that he was an inferior being and would never understand the aspirations of his race. He said that he knows about the system because he has it too, but it is much stronger than the Yuan system. It was difficult for the guy to speak, but he asked if the man was a reborn man. The man said that the guy's system was just an imitation, and his ancestor got the power to kill gods by killing the hero of humanity. Chao Yuan that the man is one of the family who used the secret technique and turned into a demon using the system. The guy tried to get up, despite his injuries, and asked what his opponent's goal was. The man listened to the question and quietly repeated it after Chao Yuan. And then he shouted that his goal was to kill all people, otherwise his race would die. Well, if he succeeds, then he will become immortal and one fine day all the deities will kneel before him. Chao Yuan rushed to the attack and began shouting that the man was simply crazy. The man did not expect the attack, so Chao Yuan could use the luck stealing dragon claw strike technique. The man frowned and could not understand how Chao Yuan was able to maintain the ability to move. At that moment, the man saw a drop of water behind his opponent. It glittered in the sun and fell to the floor of the arena one after another, creating a small puddle. 
Then the man remembered how the guy was sweating a few minutes ago and realized that it was all an illusion. Chao Yuan said that in this illusion, one moment can last a hundred years. Chao Yuan said that he could not defeat him now, for the next hundred or thousand years he would have to stay here. Chao Yuan stood in the middle of a large fog and said that now it was time to just wait for the man to end. The guy thought it was strange that the system asked him to use this skill so often and decided that it had a weak return. Jiang Shen appeared behind the guy and said that he knew the answer to this question. Chao Yuan became interested and promised to tell only when the man was killed. Jiang Shen promised that if he had any problem, he would help him and began to disappear. The man laughed and said that he could not believe that Yuan was able to control time in this space at such a level. The man turned into an old man and said that only because of what he had lost, he would soon die of old age. Chao Yuan smiled at his opponent and said that he was quite smart. The old man said that Lan Yang, whom he called to capture the phoenix and Sun Wu, would soon return. The guy did not believe the old man's words and said that Lan Yen would not become his slave. The reason said that Lan Yen became a slave at least because he was able to give him strength. The old man said that now the fire wolf's ability is much greater than before, it will turn off after Yuan's death. The great phoenix was severely beaten, and the fire wolf was dragging her by the hair. Chao Yuan, you are sure that this is impossible, because you believe that even if Lang Yang became stronger, he could not defeat the phoenix. The enemy closed his eyes and offered to make a bet in this case. The man narrowed his eyes and asked what the guy thinks who is stronger than his strength or Chao Yuan's friends. The fire wolf appeared near the place where Chao Yuan's battle was taking place and said that he had done it. Lan Yen threw the girl away from him and said that with the forces of a master, even a phoenix is very easy to deal with. Xiao Deng lay unconscious on the floor next to her fourth great uncle. Chao Yuan realized that now all he had to do was defeat Lang Yang to save the master. The fire wolf flexed his fists and said that he couldn't wait any longer. The guy rushed to the attack and shouted that he should be allowed to take proper revenge for the fact that his Yin Yao fell. Chao Yuan was deprived of much of his strength and was also severely wounded. He tried to move away and dodge the attack, but felt severe pain in his body. The man noticed that the guy was losing control and kidnapped him again with purple fire. The old man was happy when he caught the guy in the trap and said that it looks like he won this time. But Chao Yuan smiled happily and asked the man not to be so self-confident ahead of time. The fire wolf in the air held Chao Yuan by the neck, but he did not react at all. Therefore, Lan Yen was very angry and threw the guy to the floor of the arena with all his strength. The wolf told the white tiger that despite all his actions, the illusion did not dissipate. The divine beast looked at the guy and said that he already looks like they killed him. Lan Yen said that he planned to keep him nearby so that there would be at least some benefit. Chao Yuan was surrounded by fog and asked the man to allow him, with his meager race, to destroy the entire almighty old man's race. The man grinned and asked what else the guy could do at such a moment. Chao Yuan closed his eyes and began to mentally ask Jiang Shen to lend him his strength for one skill. The blonde appeared and said that the guy was useless, but Yuan told him not to find fault and to listen to him. Jiang Shen listened to the guy and said that he could only enhance the energy he had. Chao Yuan smiled and told the blonde that even this would be enough for him. Jiang Shen folded his hands into a seal and asked the guy to show him all his capabilities. This was not a big problem and Chao Yuan showed the ghost his skills. Branches suddenly began to appear on the ground at high speed and began to approach the demons. The fire wolf looked around and was very scared, he asked the divine beast what was happening. I played this game for you and the fiery wolf had to dodge because in the place where they stood, another tree grew. The branches began to surround their master, and the white tiger recognized the thousand tree technique, which could heal all wounds. The divine beast had only seen a level 9 divine grass demon use it once many years ago. Chao Yuan is surrounded by branches that heal his real body at great speed. The old man saw that the illusion was not dissipating and was angry because he could not understand what those two scum were doing. His hands began to turn black, and the man did not understand what was happening to him. Chao Yuan said that his powers could protect and heal him and noticed that someone else's body was at its limit. The old man began to demand that he be released from here immediately, otherwise his soul would not stand it. Chao Yuan said that the man had committed many crimes, so he would be destroyed. The old man shouted that he was the chosen one and could not die here, and his body turned even blacker. 
The man began to dissolve in the world of illusions and understood that this would be his end. Chao Yuan laughed and the man finally decided to insult him, and he told the dust in which he had turned to repent in hell for his sins. Chao Yuan's eyes opened to the real world and flashed in the sun. He realized that he was lying surrounded by many branches, which meant that he had returned to the real world. Chao Yuan sat down and said that he would now deal with the two of them. The fire wolf asked his partner what they would do with the guy now. White Tiger suggested that they simply return Xian Wu and the Phoenix because they were not ready to fight. Chao Yuan shouted that they could leave, but on the condition that they be left here. The White Tiger ran away with the master in his hands, and the fire wolves were carried by Xiao Dan. Chao Yuan was angry and realized that he had spent too much energy and now he would not be able to catch them. At that moment, he remembered that the Silver Wolf Princess was also with him. He turned around and saw that the girl was lying on the floor unconscious and ran to her. He was very scared and leaned down to check if the Silver Wolf Princess was breathing. Chao Yuan was very happy when he found out that she was still alive and picked her up. Behind the guy, someone said that the festival will only end when all the demons admit defeat. A team of four demons emerged from the crowd and said that Yuan had not defeated them. The demon saw that the guy was very exhausted and told him that only the one who remains at the end will be king. Chao Yuan carefully lowered the silver wolf princess onto the arena floor. And he went to the rest of the demons, he asked why they didn't fight with that guy earlier. The demons laughed and said that strategy is an important part of the battle. Chao Yuan looked away and realized that he had no strength left and his spirit was also weak. He spread his hands and asked if they would let him go if he admitted defeat. Demons began to surround the guy and say that they could not allow him to regain his strength and return. One of them shouted that they were attacking together and demons from all sides rushed to attack. At the same time, a loud whistle was heard and another participant intervened in this battle. This participant turned out to be Zhou Yu, who stood up to protect Chao Yuan from the demons. He later pointed his sword at them and asked if they had chosen a leader because he wanted to talk to them. The demons got scared and began to retreat because they recognized the strongest man, Zhou Yu. The human light frowned and told them to answer his questions or test the edge of his sword. After this, the demons immediately began pointing at Chao Yuan and shouting that he was their leader. Zhou Yu was surprised when Chao Yuan shouted that the demons were changing their minds too quickly. The guy pointed your finger at them and shouted that they have no respect for themselves. Zhou Yu turned to Chao Yuan and asked him to follow him to the sage because he wished to see the demon leader. Chao Yuan asked if he saw anything suspicious, but the guy said that refusal would not be accepted. Jiang Shen appeared next to the guy and asked who it was, and Yuan, that he must be a sage, upset this place. Chao Yuan picked up the she-wolf and said that he could go, but his wife was seriously injured and needed to be cured first. Zhou Yu said that it was not a problem and added that he knew a very good place for treatment. Chao Yuan was surprised when Human Light said that there was a spring not far from here that could heal wounds. They went to the source, it was very beautiful there in sunny weather, and the water gurgled pleasantly. In such an atmosphere, the Silver Wolf Princess opened her eyes and slowly looked around. She realized that she was in the water, but did not remember how she got here and where she was. Chao Yuan touched the girl's back to check her condition. But Yin Yao did not expect someone else's touch, she quickly got up and started asking who was there. Her body was wrapped in a towel, but due to sudden movements, she found herself in front of the guy without clothes. Chao Yuan blushed deeply and his heart began to beat faster at the sight of the naked female body. The Silver Wolf Princess couldn't believe her eyes and was ready to die from embarrassment. She immediately covered herself and started calling for help, Chao Yuan followed her and she screamed, explaining that he wanted to cure her. Yin Yao slapped the guy and said that she would allow herself to be healed, but only if he closed his eyes. Chao Yuan asked the girl to tie her hair to make it easier for him to heal her, the she-wolf did it. The two of them sat in the spring, and the guy touched her back, healing all the wounds. The silver wolf princess asked Chao Yuan what happened when she was unconscious. Chao Yuan exhaled heavily and said that this is actually a very long story. The she-wolf turned around and indignantly asked who changed her clothes to bathe her in the spring. The guy got very nervous and began to stutter, trying to come up with something suitable. The girl sensed his nervousness and became very angry with Chao Yuan again. Zhou Yu sat at the other end of the spring and heard their screams, he wondered what they were doing there. 
he turned his gaze to the small box that stood next to him, and he thought that he was very interested in why the great sage needed this thing. 